Rut 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 Romulus. Rut 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 Remus. Rut 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 Romulus. Rut rut. Saluete omnes, saluete amici. Uh, welcome to tonight's stream. Uh, I am uh, Decimus Aurelius Ingenarius Legatus et Perfectus uh, Provincia Australiae. Uh, of Nova Roma. Hello, welcome. Uh, very pleased to have you for our fifth assembly of the Republic of Rome by Valley Games, the 2009 edition. Uh, this will be a very tense, very fascinating uh, Senate assembly to watch this evening. Our senators are waiting backstage in our virtual tabletop, uh, eager to get their hands in the, the pie of war. Uh, they are facing many of them, uh, many conflicts on the table, including the Second Macedonian War, the First Gallic War, and the First and soon to be the Second Punic War as well, which will be a monstrous task to undertake. So let's not delay any further. Let's cross live into the virtual tabletop through the Roll20 interface uh, and let's get this show on the road. Don't go away. We'll start our transition now. See you soon. Uh, okay, we're in. Sorry, folks, you guys were having a chat about who was winning and who was losing wars. <laughs> we, yeah, I, we have a lot of wars. That's the problem. I think, right? yeah, well, exactly. So I think that, uh, guys, we need to choose some new leadership this time. Because <laughs> our I previous general... was a die rolls, mate. Hasn't uh, Chris got a veteran legion? It's it's our mistake. Yeah, well, that's it. I did have a win there. I got a veteran legion. That's right. So we have had one. No, no, no. That was just win. during the last loss. He got a veteran legion. I think yeah. our mistake yeah. is that we are letting conscientious objectors lead our armies. It's <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> too much. We've got to choose different army leaders. Yeah. Start uh, the draft. I think it's time. But I think as well, um, you know, we need some rabbit's feet or. Um, what else did the Romans uh, think was lucky? <laughs> oh, what was it that Trump had? He had some sort of growth on his heel or something. He couldn't join the army. Oh, yeah, flat feet. That's his own spear. That was it. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> right. Uh, all right. Uh, all right, gents. Uh, let's uh, let's uh, start tiptoeing our way into this uh, grand uh, session, this grand year. Now, first of all, we need to wrap up uh, two points of logistics and administration from our last session that we missed. Uh, first of all, if I, we turn our attention to the Reapers' party, uh, now rightfully gained, uh, Julius acquired a knight in the last session. Uh, however, he was still uh, outside of Rome uh, on campaign at the point in time in which he acquired that knight. Now, that's not allowed, but what we're going to do, instead of rescinding that knight, we're simply going to allow him to transfer that knight to another senator. Um, that has been assessed. So what I'd like uh, you to do there, Cornelius Dolabella, is just simply select oh. one of your other senators and uh, we'll uh, provide the necessary knight tokens to adjust that. Okay, I like that. Um, so which, which other senator would you have preferred to have had the knight in this session? Uh, um, Valerius, I suppose. All right, Valerius. All right, I'll put the knight on his and I'll just change out Julius's knight back with a one. There we go. Perfect. So you're all sorted now. That's been tidied up. Yeah. So as a, as a reminder, only senators present in Rome are eligible to roll for a knight. Okay. Well, didn't um, he get sacked? Uh, yeah. So didn't yeah, he, 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 he was eventually uh, pulled back uh, to during the Senate phase when new forces uh, were pulled in, but during the initiative phase, he was still out. Uh, he was still oh, okay. at war um, as a proconsul, but that's okay. We've 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 corrected that issue now. Now the other thing we need to do is, uh, although we assigned uh, and dealt with our, our losses, we didn't uh, draw the necessary death chits to see if our dictator and master horse survived that last battle. Um, it was a sh it was a close stalemate, uh, um, and some bad omens made it that slightly worse. Uh, and we saw. Um, a loss of a single fleet and a single legion. So what we need to do now, and we'll have the dictator do this, and the dictator is currently uh, Fabius Maximus um, from the Optimates party. So if the Optimates would kindly please roll uh, from the rollable tables, the death chit uh, roll table, and we'll uh, check for an ID number one or an ID number two in those rolls yeah. to see if you survive. Okay? The first mm -hmm. one is a none. That's a great first draw. Let's draw a second one. It's a 12, okay? So both the Dictator and Master of Horse have survived uh, that last uh, battle, that last naval battle conflict. So, phew, wipe the sweat from our brow. Okay, let's jump into the mortality phase. Let's remind ourselves and, and help with the people at home uh, who are watching on. Pull up your cheat sheets. Uh, and as you can tell, there's mine. Uh, one war for every set of matched wars is moved from imminent to active. 
uh, following order. So we have one of those this time around, like we didn't before. So that second Punic War is now going to come up to uh, with the first Punic War. And so somebody from one of the senators, remind me, what happens to the strength of those wars now? Doubled. They double, that's right. So now, uh, th that's in <coughs> isolation when you look at it. So the first Punic War now has a land and fleet strength of 20. Then you add the plus three for Hamilcar on top of that. And the second Punic War also currently has that strength, but you have to fight the wars in order. So uh, knowingly, you'll defeat the first Punic War and the second Punic War will return back to its base strength of 15 and zero fleets. Okay. Um, so that first Punic War is now all the more difficult uh, because of the arrival of the Second Punic War. So Hannibal Barker is uh, getting right in there. Okay, what we need to do now is age uh, our senators gracefully. Um, now, but take take careful attention to this time. We had to correct a few errors with aging last time when I did my senator live roll and audit. So make sure you're uh, pulling in and aging your senators correctly. And uh, as normal, I'm going to help the Reapers party out. Uh, oh, hang on, I'm, I'm, I just need an eight for my oldest guy. Just, just need an eight, perfect, okay. So make sure you're aging your senators correctly. Uh, yeah. If you run out of black chip tokens, let me know. I'll yeah. well, it's easy copy some more. Because I just got to, they all go up one, so I just, the six and the five, I just need an eight for um, perfect. That's, uh, that's right. Achilles because he's now eight. Uh, you should be able to see your eight in your view zone there now next to Julius. Okay. And you can take the five away. I shall do that indeed. Oh, there's the eight. Uh, right. Is there anybody else I can assist uh, while Thank we're here? Thank you. Um, all right. Okay. I apologize, I must have misread them last time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Zoom in, make sure you got the correct numbers. I think that's all it was last time, was, was a misread of numbers. Yeah, a two and a nine or something, wasn't it? Yeah, that's right. We saw two and nines look mm -hmm. pretty similar. Yeah, that's right. So everybody just take your time. No, no rush. Uh, make sure you age all your senators correctly. Uh, and if you're unsure, you can look at the uh, live senator role on the Facebook group to see what your senators currently are. Uh, and that will obviously give you the clues to what they will become. Uh, and then we'll need to do our, uh, our senator aging um, for all those that are seven and up. And uh, we can remind ourselves on the uh, the aging senators rule on the far right hand side of the VTT, and I've brought it up for those uh, watching along at home. Okay. So we see the natural death results. Um, his card is wiped clean upon death, except for all money, which is retained on that senator's card. Uh, and then his faction can make immediate one-time persuasion attempt against the senator without subtracting the target's loyalty uh, and assuming the senator is unaligned, which makes things a little bit easier, um, but subtracting his, his money on his card. Uh, this uh, simulates that the elder statesman's heir would likely uh, to continue as the loyal um, offspring, I guess. Okay, is everybody uh, finished aging their senators? Give me a thumbs up on camera if you have. One, two, three, four, and waiting on Sempronius Aquila. Five, perfect, very good. Let's start with our highest ranking available officer, who I believe has two elder uh, senators down in the yes. next section. So uh, let's, uh, let's start with your oldest, with uh, Junius. Uh, go ahead and um, roll a 1d6, and you just do not want to get a six at this rate. Okay. Waiting for a roll. It's a four, so Junius will survive another day. Uh, now let's do uh, uh, Alias, uh, who's currently seven. Roll. Um, um, well, actually, Junius needed to not get a five or a six, so he was lucky there. Ju Alias just needs to not get a six. So uh, let's roll that one. And, oh, uh, no, Junius. Yes. Uh, uh, fortunately, uh, uh, no, that was the Alias's roll, correct? Or did you, did, um, did you assume Junius first? I, well, to be fair, I was doing Genius first, so right, that so is Alias. We've seen, we've seen Alias Carcat, so what we're going to do is we're just going to put your Faction Leader token just to the side for the moment. Uh, field Console, if you want to return to the Sand Pit in the middle, because that'll come up for election this year. Um, and if you want to uh, uh, tuck his, the Influence token away, and you can remove the Death Chit uh, token from his card as well at the moment, um, if you want to do that. Yeah. Uh... It. 
And, uh, and now you get to make off, uh, you do your uh, persuasion attempt. So I'm going to bring up my little cheat sheet here as well. And so, so do I, because he was um, a faction leader. Uh, no, that's 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 fine. You, you still get you're still entitled to make a persuasion attempt against him, and this is you to see if you can keep him. If not, he'll. Oh, uh, sorry, I, th I thought you didn't have to do that for the faction leader. Okay. Fine. Um, no, irrespective in this case, this is to try and save, uh, I guess, the amount of senators that you have in your faction. So, uh, this is you persuading yourself, really. <laughs> cool. All right. Um, I'd like uh, Fabius to do it. So Fabius is going to do it. So let's start with uh, his uh, oratory rating. What's his oratory rating there? Two. It is two. And what's his influence? 20. It is 20. And we're currently residing at 22. Um, and uh, I suppose you, you could bribe him, but we can come to that once we work out the, the base number here. Okay. okay. Uh, we don't need to work <laughs> out. Uh, he, uh, what's his loyalty rating on his card? Seven. It is, it is seven. Um, and he doesn't have any other factors on his card. He's got uh, no money that we need to talk about. And we can assume that they're unaligned as well, in, also in this case as well. Uh, so let's uh, let's do quick math. Who can do 22 minus 7? Go. 15. 15. Mm. Boo, 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 boo. That's nice and quick. 15. Okay. Um, now, because that is greater uh, than, than a set number, it's essentially it's automatic. Um, so now I can just double check that in the rules. Uh, so I'm looking at my persuasion attempt uh, cheat sheet here. Um, Oh, so it's basically I need to roll less than 15 on 2d6. Right, yeah, and because uh, <laughs> because the maximum number you can get on a 2d6 is 12, we automatically yeah. know that that is going to be less than 15. So you're going to retain alias there as, as a young'un. Um, so, so, uh, so lose the influence. Uh, yep, so drop the influence uh, back into the uh, token bucket down the bottom and you can put the death chit token back as well. Uh, and you'll hang on to alias uh, for now. So that's fine. Okay, so that's both your elder uh, senators uh, dealt with now. Let's move across to the Reaper's party. Uh, let's see, you've got two elder statesmen as well. Yeah, I've got Achilles' eight and... Um, All right, so let's... Uh, Let's start. Seven. Let's start with Achilles. Um, so yeah. roll a one d six. You do not want a five or a six. Okay. Okay. You get a one. He survives. Well done. All right. Uh, let's move on to Julius, who's now seven. Um, okay. Yeah. You just don't want to roll a six for him here. Go well, ahead. Roll for Julius, who's age seven. Ah. Oh. Wow, you are one. you're all about the ones, are you? <laughs> Snake eyes. <laughs> Found uh, the fountain of youth. <laughs> so uh, both of your uh, senators survive, so you'll be very happy about that. Uh, no, no tempting fate with a persuasion roll. Okay, uh, let's okay. check the Torquinius Pro Praetore faction. Uh, I see uh, one, two, five, six, and seven. So you put them in age order. I like that a lot. Uh, Aurelius ID number nine. One uh, d six. Just don't get a six. Nine. He Did rolls he a die? one. Very good. Well done. So he survives for another year. Let's skip, skip across now to uh, 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 Kiwibas da Panem. Um, we have six for Canuis is fine. Let's start with your older Senator 8, which is Flaminus of 13. Uh, there, Sempronius, go ahead and roll anything but a five or a six. Waiting for it to come up. You roll a two. He survives. Very good. Let's do Furious ID number eight, our current sensor. Just don't get a six. Three. Very good. So they all survive. Uh, things are starting to look up, folks. This is uh, this is pretty good. Well, didn't we have one death? Yeah, we, we did, and that's not too bad. Yeah. That's 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 pretty that's pretty good. Okay, let's look at the Hand of God faction. We've got a 7, 8, a 6, and a 6. Quite an aged uh, faction. Let's start with your oldest, Terentius, uh, aged 8. Just not a 5 or a 6 there, uh, Posthumus Arwim. You get the 4. Oh, he was lucky. That was, that, was, <laughs> that, was a, that was an aggressive roll, too. I like it. Uh, let's do uh, uh, Quinticus, uh, ID 18, 7. Just don't get a 6. He gets a two. Oh. Well done. Okay. Only only, mm -hmm. only one senator uh, uh, passed on from natural causes that round. So that concludes uh, the mortality phase, if I'm not mistaken, which indeed it does. Let's move on to the revenue phase now, which is uh, very important, I'd argue, right now for you guys. Uh, let's do our usual. We're going to do some personal revenue calculations now, and I'll do my usual reminder. So your faction leader, and if you don't have a faction leader right now, which applies to one faction, means somebody's not getting three talents. Uh, every other senator, of course, no. gets... 
one talent as per normal senatorial income. Uh, I don't think you've got a pot. Right. Yeah. Did Indominus do them uh, uh, more talent? Yes. Did I miss yep. It? Yep. He did. Oh, uh, he survived. Both of his senators survived. Yep. Nice. Good. Good. Good <laughs> for checking. <laughs> um, yeah, we, and we were just really efficient. We're doing really well. Um, very impressed, folks. Okay, uh, so yes, all your senators get one talent. Don't forget to collect on all of your concessions as well, um, whatever those amounts are, except obviously for the fleet concession, which requires fleets to be purchased. Uh, we don't have a Pontifus Maximus to worry about, and we don't have any governors. So it should be a little bit simpler this round. Uh, so everybody do your calculations, and as per normal, I'm going to drop your funding into your withdrawal zones, of course. Um, um, but I might be nice for both Indominus, uh, Sempronius. Uh, I'm going to drop your funds into your tray so you don't have to go hunting for them. Uh, so let's start, in fact, with um, uh, Indominus. How much funding can I get you this evening? Uh, 14, thanks. 14, okay. 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Okay, I'm going to zoom out and just pass that to you. 14. Uh, yep, 14. Yeah, let's get the rest of it. 13, 14, that's better. I got distracted zooming out while I was counting out your your talents. Okay, so that should hopefully be in your zone now. Very good, I'm going to zoom back in again. Next faction, uh, the Reapers Party. How much am I getting you today? Uh, 10, please. 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. I'll drop yours in your zone as well. Okay, make Thank things you. easy. Okay, very good. Uh, let's go to uh, Siwidus Panem. How much am I getting you guys today? Eight. Eight, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and I'm going to drop that up there. Stand by. Um, there we go. That should be in your zone. Okay. Yeah. Uh, let's do the Hand of God faction. How much am I getting you guys? Thirteen, please. Thirteen, five. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. Was it? Yes. Thirteen. Good. Uh, that is in your withdrawal zone. You may withdraw uh, that at your leisure. And finally, the optimates. How much am I getting you guys? Six. <laughs> wow! Don't spend it all at once. Um, yeah. One, two, three, four, five, and six. And you will find that in your withdrawal zone. Thank you. All right. Uh, then, of course, we can bounce straight into that redistribution step, folks. So go ahead, move that funding in between the senators at your leisure. Uh, move it to and from your faction treasury at your leisure. Uh, don't forget, in fact, if you are banking with me, uh, you can, of course, whisper to me to find out how much you've got or make withdrawals or additions uh, using the banking zone as you desire. Okay, so I'll give you a moment to consider all of your funding and where it's going. Uh, and don't forget, uh, of course, you, you're all in the same room and you can have conversations as well, uh, public agreements, what you should be doing with your funding, etc. Yeah, I think we should uh, be donating to the Treasurer, guys. I'm certainly going to be doing some of that myself. Mm -hmm. Is there a limit that you can donate or can you just donate a couple of talents? Uh, there's no limit to what you can donate. But it's 10 to affect your popularity, isn't it? Uh, so donating to the state treasury, I believe, uh, a minimum of 10 talents will get you influence. Where, is that shown somewhere? Yes, is it, it is. Uh, so if you look down um, on oh, the yeah, uh, state revenue, left. bottom left yeah. of the board, yep, that'll tell you. And does that come out of the senator's pocket or the faction pocket? It comes out of an individual senator's pocket because it's assigning influence, so it has to come out from a senator. Okay. So um, remember, uh, your faction treasury is only ever used for defending against persuasion attempts and paying maintenance on rebel troops. Uh -huh. Everything else comes from a single personal treasury. So bidding on initiatives, offensive persuasion attempts, knights attraction, donations to the state, sponsoring games, buying votes, and bribing legions. And uh, that's right, I did say buying votes. <laughs> Um, so for those that uh, don't recall or haven't seen that rule, when it comes to your faction's turn, you can, of course, uh, vote whichever way you wish using the votes that you currently have, and then you can buy at uh, one talent apiece additional votes to add to your 
particular persuasion, yay or nay. Okay, how's everyone's redistribution going? Is everybody happy now? Um, Almost there. Give me a sec. Yeah. Yeah. No, no rush. Take your time. This is uh, this is not something to be rushed. Uh, what we what I might do is my usual uh, walk around various factions, make sure everybody indeed has money in various pockets. So it looks like the Reapers party is happy, they're good to go. Uh, the uh, Indominus' faction looks good to go. Suidus uh, de Panem at uh, Cucurensis looks great. Hand of God still allocating right now. Optimus has just finished. Okay. <laughs> Okay. All right. Uh, all right, everyone, give me a thumbs up when you are ready. Thumbs up to the camera. One, two, three, four, five. Great. It's, it's great when you can see each other. It's awesome. Okay. Uh, we have no province development. Okay. Uh, let's go ahead and do our state revenue. So for the Quaestor, 100 talents to the state treasury, please. And uh, let's start uh, with the highest ranking available officer, which is the Dictator from the Optimates. Uh, if you'd like to make from a single personal treasury any donations to the State Treasury, now is your time. Uh, so uh, over to you, Cornelius Calum. Will you be donating anything to the State Treasury? Um, given my experience of what happened when I left people with no money on them last time, I will not be <laughs> uh, putting any um, donations in, unfortunately, because I only had six talents as well. Uh, not a problem. Moving on to the Reapers party. Will you be donating to the state treasury at all? Now, this, uh, if I donate 10 from an individual, it gets him influence. It gets him one influence, correct. Yep. Okay, well, oh. in that case, um, Julius yes. is going to donate 10 talents to the state treasury. Perfect. All right, let me get you. Uh, I'll update his influence for you now. So he's now going to go to 17 <coughs> influence. And I'll take that 10 talents away and put that in the bank down here. Very good. Here, yeah? <laughs> uh, and uh, we can increase your influence on the influence tracker. And I'll also need to update your faction influence as well. You'll need a five. We can do that yeah. very quickly here. Great. Look at that. You're all sorted now. Thank you. Perfect. My pleasure. Okay. And then, of course, the quest, I'm sure, has already tackled that extra 10 talents to the state treasury. Um, and speaking of which, uh, Indominus, it's now your turn, should you wish to donate to the State Treasury. All right, so um, Cato the Elder feels like he's made a terrible mistake in uh, nominating such a terrible dictator, and uh, he's willing to sacrifice more than half, half his wealth, so he's going to donate <laughs> eight, uh, five uh, five coins. Okay, very good. Uh, so that will now put us at um, uh, 120, uh, I believe now. Yep. Okay, so I'll move those down to the bank. All right. So we're now at 120 in the state uh, state treasury. That's that's pretty good. Everything looks great there. So let's move across to Suidas uh, da Panem. Anything to the state treasury from you guys? Five talents. Five talents, very good. So that's an uh, extra five to the state treasury there for the Quaestor. All right, I'll move that down to the bank. I'll let you grab it. Thank you. Perfect. We're out of twos. I can't see any twos anyway. Uh, let's make some more. Uh, who's got a two that I can cut and paste right now? I've only got ones. Yeah, i got a two in my faction influence. Uh, yes, you do. Okay, control C. Um, okay, I've just made a whole whole bunch there. Um, you can move them into your stockpile as well um, from your zone okay. there. <coughs> okay, um, let's go to the Hand of God faction. Anything from you guys? Uh, yes, so we do, or Fulvius will be donating 25 to the state treasury. Very good, nice. and uh, mm -hmm. that is quite significant. We'll give you three oh. influence. Perfect. All right, so I'll take that down to the bank now yep. and I'll make sure... Big spender. Uh, guys, look, <laughs> I'm just here supporting the state because I don't want to die. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to be overwhelmed by barbarians. So. Well, that's why I donated some money because we're going to need it to buy oh, troops. We are going to need it. 
Hopefully we build some ships because I get a bit of cash, uh, cash back from that. Oh, so. that's right. <laughs> Every time we build a fleet, you get something. Yeah, I do. Say so again. I don't think uh, everyone heard you there. Me? About the cash back you get? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Cash back. Talents back. Was our presiding magistrate, did he die or is he still alive? Uh, the presiding magistrate is still alive. Yes. That should be the dictator yeah. right now. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Okay, uh, I'm just going to hide that token back down here. Very good. Uh, if somebody gets bored and wants to clean up the uh, black and grey number token bay, that would be very helpful because they're a bit everywhere at the moment. Um, so if somebody gets bored. Um, while we move on, now that's everybody had an opportunity now to donate to the state treasury. Very good. Uh, let's move on. Um, let's talk about debts for the state. So let's start with calculating... The big one first, which is 20 talents for every active and unprosecuted war. Um, so right now you've got one, two, three, four wars for a total of four by 20, which is uh, how much, folks? 80. 80. That's 80 talents. Just, just where did you guys go to school? It doesn't matter the answer. 60. <laughs> <laughs> you said it was four. Yeah, it's four wars. Oh, I thought you said it was four. Yeah, he's, he's, he's trying. He's trying, folks. It's, uh, <laughs> he's trying to save the game. <laughs> so, so let's uh, let's uh, deduct that, which I think it already has been uh, is in the process of right now in state treasury. And then, of course, you now need to add up uh, minus two talents for each of your legions and fleets. So if somebody would like to do that now, and we'll deduct that from the state treasury as well. All right, who's got a number for me? 20. 20 lead, 20 of each? Or 20 total. No, 20 total. 20 total, but they're, t they're two each, right? So 40. Yeah, okay. That's what I was asking. We're in dire oh, straits, folks. We're in dire uh, straits. Very expensive. No local forces and no governors to worry about. Um, and so that will conclude the revenue phase. Uh, so what is the current faction treasury, uh, the, the state treasury right now? 300 divided by 10. Yeah, right. Okay. Yeah, okay. <laughs> okay, let's move on to the forum phase. Uh, let's see what we can get rid of here. First of all, let's get rid of that sneaky manpower shortage, which is never helpful. So that's going to disappear. Hopefully it doesn't come back. Uh, we can also get rid of the evil omens card. It's uh, just worth noting that we would be in the negatives if it had been for the personal contributions from everyone. Uh, we uh, saw wow. Except, except the dictator. But yes, that's a fair point. Mm. Uh, well, actually, what, yeah, good, good, good call, what, guys. <laughs> what would have happened so if we were if we were negative? That's it. It's over. That, that's it. That's that's game set match. You're gone. Wow. Yeah. Uh, well, at, at least done those maths at, earlier. At, at, <laughs> we stay Rome. At, 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 at least until the uh, at the end. So the fact that you survived with the wars is good. I believe there is room for any legion or fleet you can't pay for, you can disband and as such not have to pay for them. So you could have still survived on that front. And then if you're lucky to defeat a war, you get more talents back then as well. So really the check occurs at the end. It's just that if you went into um, minus debt and stayed minus debt and when you do your, your, your check at the end of the revolution phase, then uh, that would have called it. But the fact that you're still in the, in the black right now is great news, folks. So uh, uh, good cooperation there. Uh, yeah. Right, so we uh, remove the uh, manpower shortage, that's gone. We remove the, the, the bad omens event, that's now gone as well. So no more uh, weird die roll modifications as well. The only one that's going to stay there is the enemy war hero refuge card. That will come into play later once you guys finally start getting some victories uh, on the board, okay? All right, so uh, let's now Who's move into... Who's our field council? Sorry, I've gotten... Sorry, yes. what's your question? Who's our current field commander? Uh, there isn't one. He died. He died. Yeah, oh, that's he died. what I thought. Yeah, that's why I'm getting confused. Yeah, 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 yeah he, but the he dictator's does. in charge. Yep. <laughs> uh, so let's do our uh, initiative step, starting with our highest ranking available officer, which is the dictator from the Optimates. Then going clockwise. So go ahead and roll your 2d6, and uh, let's see if it's a 7 or not to begin with. Um, oh, sorry, did I miss the faction leader change bit? That comes up after you do your rolls. Cool, after my rolls. Great. Um, 2d6. Uh, you get the four. So please go ahead and draw the top single card from the early Republic deck 
and God. do that usual <laughs> red check or black <laughs> text check. I do not want to look at this. Ah, it's red. Okay, great. You hang on to that then. Uh, let's finish off the rest of your initiative, starting with, uh, would you like to make a persuasion attempt? Um... Does that go with all of that stuff? Do you have some of the persuasion of four? Oh, worth a shot. Um, can alias... Oh no, one sec. Influence is part of it as well, is it? Or is it just oratory? Influence is very much part of it. Uh, so yeah, Fabius... Oh, but if Fabius isn't in Rome, can he do a persuasion of scent? Uh, if he's uh, no, they have to be in Rome. Um, so let's uh, let's just read the, the first couple of lines off here. Um, any senator in Rome may make the persuasion attempt. So they have to be in Rome to make the persuasion attempt. Crap! Well, all of mine have really bad um, influence. So okay, I'll skip the persuasion attempt. Okay, and who's rolling for a knight today? Um, One of your three that's in Rome. Alias the youngest um, will um, make a persuasion attempt and I'll throw one talent in as well. Great, so you need to oh, roll... Sorry, persuasion and knight. Yep, sure. So go ahead and roll uh, a 5 or a 6 on a 1d6 and let's see if you get a knight. Ooh. Oh, nicely done. Great. Uh, uh, just dump... Uh, I'll grab your talent. There we go. Perfect. Well done. I'll take that away. Uh, you can grab yourself a knight, a single knight token, place that on his card. And uh, now you can go ahead and allocate that faction leader token. Great. Um, so I'll still keep it in this. Cool. Right, very good. Uh, the, the family dynasty continues. All right, and uh, will you be sponsoring any games today? Uh, most definitely not. Certainly. Let's go around to the Reapers Party. Reapers Party, go ahead and roll your 2d6. Let's check for a 7. 2d6s. What happens if I get a 7? Uh, we'll see for events. Oh, Hopefully not a bad omen. He rolls a two. Is that another snake eyes? <laughs> <laughs> wow, you are all about the one, sir. Holy yeah. early. You are not <laughs> being the general. <laughs> uh, go yeah, ahead. but in this case, it's good to roll these. Yeah, yeah. That's, uh, uh, go ahead and roll the top single card from the early Republic deck, and uh, we'll do our usual check to see if it's red text or black text. Okay, so one card. All right, see, so it's gone into your hand. All right, check your new card. See yeah. if that's red text or black text. Oh, it is red. Oh, is it really? Well, you get to hang on to that then and keep that to yourself for the moment. Uh, all right, uh, would you like to make a persuasion attempt? Um, no, thank you. Okay, who's going to be rolling for a night today? I think all of your senators are eligible. Okay. Take that off. All right. Uh, now, for rolling for knights, what helps? Influence? Uh, money. Money, money, money. <laughs> oh, right, okay. From a single okay. personal treasury? I know. Okay, we'll have, to, we'll have to be Valerius, and he's the only one with any <laughs> much coin left. Sure, okay. And how much is uh, uh, Valerius looking to spend? Oh, he's already got a knight. Is that... He can have another one, and it all adds okay. to your votes and, f um, and, uh, and, and, and stuff, so... Okay, well, he'll spend three talents. He'll spend three talents. Okay, so you'll need a six, a five, a four, or a three on a 1d6. Okay. Okay, six of so on 1d6. Alrighty. A three. Uh, that's good, yeah. Did I say that? Three, four, five, or a six. Yep, so you get a knight. Uh, so I'll go get you a token. Excellent. Oh, I just want yep. the one. Hang on, steady. There we go. And I'll change that out for you. There we go. you now got two. Yep. And do you want to take the money? Uh, I, I will, yeah. Where's the money? Go. Who's the money go to? Uh, the, money, the money goes into my pocket. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Uh, there we go. Okay. Uh, would you like to change your faction leader? Uh, well, I'm... Well, no, Valerius is the faction leader, so yeah, no, that's fine. Sure. And uh, will you be sponsoring any games today? Uh, no, because I gave all my money to the state. All <laughs> right, let's move on to the uh, uh, Priscus Taquinius Pro Pretore faction. Uh, start uh, by rolling your 2d6. Let's see if you get a 7 or not. 
He gets an eight. Go ahead and draw that top single card from the early Republic deck, and let's see what you get. Do your red text, black text check. All right, he's got it in his hand. Everybody be nervous. <laughs> uh, it looks red to me. All right, uh, if, if you're... That's a dub, would, you, would you like me to check, or are you comfortable with that? No, it's good. It's red. Great. Uh, would you like to make a persuasion attempt today? Uh, just, uh, yeah, if you wouldn't mind having a look in this case. Uh, at your cards? At my cards, yeah. All right, let me pull them up. Uh, okay. Uh, I, without zooming in, I can immediately tell they're all red. Yep. Yeah, no, but the um, the one with the uh, 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 large num large red number four down the bottom. Oh no, they both have that. <laughs> uh, give me maybe five, five four, eight. Ah, uh, yep. Okay. Yes, I'm looking at that. Yes. <clears throat> um, is he anywhere else? Uh, let's let me do a quick scan of my eyeballs. Um. <laughs> But uh, noting that can't be played just yet. Oh, okay. Yeah, so at, at the end of the of the year, year period. But in other words, that, that's good to go. Right, okay. Um, in that case, no persuasion. Okay. Um, uh, next is knights. Uh, yes, I'm going to go for a knight with uh, Melinius, and he's going to pay four. Okay, he's going to pay four talents, so that is a five, a four, a three, or two, or a six. So anything but a one is uh, what you want to roll right now. There you go. Uh, you're right, grab yourself a, a knight there, and while you're doing that, uh, will you be changing faction leader today? No. Okay, and will you be sponsoring any games today? Um, no. Okay, all right, so you're updating your knight on Manlius there. Let's go across to Kiwibus da Pandemita Sakakensis and the Sopronius Aquila. Uh, let's see, roll your 2d6. Let's see if you get a 7 or not. We've had some good cards and good rolls so far. He rolls as a 5, yeah, it looks like a 5 to me. All right, draw the single most card from the early Republic deck and uh, let's see what you get. Take that into your hand, do your red text, black text check. Mm -hmm. Where the hell are you going? Oh, I'm over here. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> that doesn't sound good. I'm assuming it's black text then, is it? Unfortunately, it is. All right, uh, throw it in the sandpit. Let's it. have a look. <laughs> Let's throw it in the sand pit. Uh, now what do we... mm. Hold on a sec, how do I throw it in the sand? Oh, uh, hold on. You just drag it from your hand to the... There we go. And flip her over. It is the first Aurelian War, ladies and gents. The first oh, Aurelian War. Oh, another war. Now, what, what, can you, uh, what can you tell me about the Aurelian War series? Didn't we do one of them already? Uh, it's not. It's inactive until we. Oh. So uh, you guys yeah. have already defeated the second Aurelian War. Am I not mistaken? Uh, yes, yes, we right. have. So therefore, what does this become? Did we beat it? No, unfortunately not. <laughs> it, it is. It is simply what they refer to as a rebellion. Yeah. Okay. Ah. Um, and uh, what is what is worthy of note about a rebellion card? Um, you... There are no spoils of war. So what that means oh, is, okay. see that that ten for talents. That means you don't get that when you when you defeat it. Now you'll still get the unrest level changes. Uh, you'll still get popularity for defeating wars, all that sort of caper. Uh, and except, you get provinces. But yeah. in this case, the exception here is you'll get provinces because the province creations requires the defeat of both the wars. Creates province of both uh, Illyricum if both wars are defeated okay so that'll be the only perk from defeating the first Aurelian war now the other good news is ladies and gents is it's currently inactive because there is no armaments icon on there it'll go all the way and sit down the inactive wars box and not be a concern or a cost until you make it so okay so although it was a war card drawn it's not 
uh, not bad, really, at this point, okay? Um, and you know that you've already defeated the other wars, so there's no chance of being matched and becoming active later. So that, if anything, is a great card draw. So uh, well done. Well done. No so need to thank you, guys. No need to thank you. <laughs> <laughs> you my bit. Okay, uh, yeah. let's uh, finish uh, Sempronius' uh, initiative. Any persuasion attempts from you today? Uh, no. Uh, who's rolling for a night today? Uh, that will be... Anybody uh, but Cornelius. Can only be furious off the minutes, right? Because, correct, um, correct. That's correct, yep. Um, let's go with furious. All right, uh, and is he spending anything today? No, he's got no money on him. All right, uh, get, get yourself a six. I hear a roll, he gets a five. Oh, unlucky. Uh, any change of your faction leader? No. Anybody sponsoring games today? No. All right, that was a nice, quick and dirty one. Well done. Uh, let's move on to the Hand of God faction for their fifth initiative. Go ahead and roll your 2d6 there, Posthumous Iwem. Let's see what you get. He gets six. Uh, so go ahead and draw the top single most card from the early Republic deck, and let's see what you get. Uh, let me have a look. Uh, it's a black text card. All right, you know what to do with it. Uh, put it there and flip. Ah, oh, Claudius. Now, does anybody have a Senator ID number five alphanumeric combination yet? Let's just double check. Any red card text Senator? Let me just double check because that will tuck in underneath him if that's the case. I don't think so. So he's probably going to sit in the forum awaiting to be persuaded yeah i think we're good there so very good so he's going to hang out with his uh with his mate uh, amelius there um very good okay uh will you be making a persuasion attempt uh, today sir um what does persuasion use again is it my, uh, my influence oratory and influence plus any bribes um uh, one sec loyalty uh yeah, I guess so. I guess I will. He guesses so. Okay, yes, so uh, which so. senator in Rome will be doing the uh, uh, persuading today? Uh, Fulvius will. Fulvius. Okay, so he has an oratory of two. He has an influence of... 17. 17. So that gives us currently a running total of 19. Uh, now, uh, let's talk about the, the target senator right now, which is... Uh... I will do it on the, uh, sorry, the Claudius. On Claudius, okay, ID 5. Okay, so uh, he has a loyalty rating of 7. Uh, he has currently no money on him right now. And now, will you be putting any bribes uh, against this persuasion attempt today? No. Okay, just a quick round the room, uh, clockwise. Uh, Optimates, any uh, counter bribes from your faction treasury? Um, are these to be faction, not personal? Uh, I believe it to be faction, and uh, yep, so defending against persuasion attempts uh, has to come from a faction treasury. Okay, no. Nope. nope. Uh, Reaper's Party, anything from your faction treasury to defend against this persuasion attempt? Uh, no, thanks. Okay, uh, Taquinius Pro Praetor faction, anything from your faction treasury? Nope. Uh, and Civitus Panem, anything from your faction treasury? Yeah, two. He's thrown in two. Put that on the senator's card. I was going to vote you to be the military leader this time. Mm -hmm. now, okay, so that gives us a base number of ten uh, yeah, with, with the two talents there. Um, uh, any, any other, to make it interesting. Any other bribes from Hand of God? You do, in fact, have another opportunity. Um, uh, can uh, I be from my treasury, or they got to be from? It's got to be from. Got to be from Fulvius. Uh, no, no, okay. no bribes then. Uh, okay, so yeah, base number is ten. That's not too bad. So go ahead and roll your two d six equal to or less than ten. Uh, please, please, come on. <laughs> hey. Oh, that's easy. I just handed you two talents. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let, me, let me send him to back. There we go. Yeah. You can go grab him and his, and his money. Take Thank him you to your know. faction. Make sure you update your faction votes and your faction influence tallies accordingly. Yeah. Now that he's in your, in your possession. Uh, now, uh, while you're also doing 100 things at once, we'll be changing your faction leader today. Uh, no. He... Uh, the other question we've got to ask is knights. Is anybody in Rome looking to roll for a knight? Uh, yes, I believe that. Sorry. Just... You're right, you're right. Yeah. I know you're going to uh, roll. Actually, uh, Claudius can... Claudius can roll for a knight, yep, certainly. Uh, is he spending any money for the cause? Um, yeah, I guess I'll spend two talents. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right, so you need to roll a four, five, or a six. Uh, I'll steal the two talents off his card there and now. You... Go ahead and roll. Let us, let's see what you get. 
Hey. Yeah, there you go. Grab yourself a night for Claudius while you're at Thank it. You. Uh, will you be uh, um, sponsoring any games today? Uh, I will, actually. Uh, one of my guys should have the money on him for uh, the lowest level one, I believe. Uh, Solpicious, is that the one yes, that you're looking for? Yes, it should spend? be. I think he's the only one. For money. And yeah, uh, he's spending seven for and popularity dice. one. So I'll steal the money off his card now. So I need to update that. Uh, okay. If the Quaister could reduce the unrest level by one. Okay. Uh, I forgot to update my popularity before from donating to the treasury, which is why it's... Uh, no, it's not popularity, it's influence. Oh, influence. Oh, I already did that then. Yes, you did. Okay, that's right. So you just, all you're just going to do is update the popularity for Sulpicious, uh, where he gets one popularity now. Um, and uh, Cloudus has got his knight, that's great. Um, and you're all set now there. All right, and you can do your update of your faction votes and factional influence while we're waiting. Uh, all right, now let's go ahead. We're now going to have to do the sixth and final initiative now, which is based on betting from a single personal treasury, getting to do all those steps again. So let's start with the highest ranking Velob officer, um, which is the dictator in the Optimates faction. Uh, Cornelius Kalem, will you be um, bidding one talent or higher uh, for the privilege of the sixth initiative? Um, I will bid one talent. All right, throw that one talent into the middle of the sandpit from me. Who's that coming from? Uh, from Junius. Junius, okay, very good. Okay, uh, Reaper's Party, uh, two talents or more if you'd like to play. Uh, no, thanks. All right, he's passed uh, pra, uh, the Priscus to Kedrus Pro Praetor faction, two talents or more to play. Um, I'm going to put four in. Wow, you, you, you oh. like these initiatives. Uh, so go ahead and throw those. Uh, yep, take your change. Uh, very good, okay. So uh, we're looking at um, uh, six or more talents to play coming uh, from uh, Sempronius' faction. Uh, five or more, isn't it? I put four in, so it's one up on that. Uh, well, we've got, we got five talents currently in the pool, so therefore it has to be six or higher. No, but a, the highest bid was four, though. How can it be six? Oh, it's cumulative. So it, was, it was a bit of one and then a bit of four on top of that. Yeah, we haven't Correct. played it like that previously. Uh, yeah, well, that's why I've been calculating it. Oh, okay. Well, you are GM. Well, uh, well, hang on. So four and one is five, yeah? Yeah, no, but I, we didn't realise yeah. it was cumulative. We just thought but my, my bid was the highest bid at four, so to top my bid... Oh, no, I see what you're saying. Five. Yeah, no, yeah, that's right. I'm, I'm looking at the pool there in the centre. No, no, you guys are right. No, very good. Uh, um, see, I'm proud of you guys. Look oh, at you guys yeah. go. That's really, that's really well done. I'm, I'm, I'm so happy. Okay, uh, all right, so five or more talents, uh, as uh, from Sopronius and you guys pointed out. Anything from you guys? From who, sorry? Uh, Sempronius, up to you. No, 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 I can't beat anyone. I'll <laughs> uh, just get him to put a ward. That's good. Uh, Hand of God, uh, anything from you guys? Five or more? Uh, uh, no. Okay, uh, and uh, and back to Optimates. Uh, would you like five or more? I know. All right, so in uh, historical trends, uh, continuing, uh, um, Indominus has won the, won the bet there, um, so he gets to take the sixth initiative. Go ahead and roll your 2d6 there, Indominus. He gets a five. Go ahead and draw that top single card from the early Republic deck, and let's see what it is. All right, I guess while he's doing that, um, can a persuasion attempt be made on a senator that's not in Rome? Uh, no, I believe they have to be in Rome. They have to be in Rome. Thank you. That'll help next time. Okay, Indominus is checking out the card. Oh, it's red. All right, you hang on to that then. So that's a that's a pretty good <laughs> pretty good roll, pretty good set of initiatives. Uh, let's finish yours off. Any persuasion attempts from you today? So can I persuade the the, the one that I showed you last time? Uh, I, I I can't I, uh, as in just today's session. Yeah. Um, I don't think there is somebody uh, on the on the field. Let me just double check. Um, stand by. Let me just check yeah. your hand. Uh, just if you, okay, um, right, or, okay, let me just have a look around the field for you, give me a moment. If we all go to Twitch, we can see what he's got, guys. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, yeah, I, I was probably looking at your wrong, wrong, oh, hang on, did we lose him? Did he disappear? Or did I move him? No, I moved him. Okay, um, 
Uh, so for you, Indominus, oh, I was looking at the wrong wrong card before. So to answer your question, yes, yes, you can um, uh, carry out that persuasion that you're thinking of. Okay. So will you be uh, continuing uh, with the persuasion attempt then? <laughs> I'm, yeah, I'm just looking at my new card that I got and I'm, um, just to see what the impact is of that. Yeah, sure, sure. No, not a problem. There's, there's like, no rush here, guys. Uh, um, that's what that's what I really want to emphasize for this session uh, and future sessions is if you need time to think about strategy and stuff, by all means, please take a moment, uh, particularly in the Senate phase or if you're a presiding magistrate and need to think about proposals, absolutely take your time. Really think yeah. about what you want to do. No pressure. We're just all waiting. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, um, yeah, I, I want to... Uh, influence persuade one of my uh, one of my, the cards in my hand. Uh, you, you can't persuade a card in your hand. You can only persuade uh, a senator that you see on the field, and it'll be not from your faction. So how do I get a card from my hand into the field? Uh, you'll it play end. it in the revolution phase, provided there right. is no uh, illegal play. Right. Okay. Okay. So I'm not doing anything now then. Right. It sounds like it. Yeah. It sounds like it. Okay, so uh, in that case then, uh, who will be rolling for a knight today? Uh, Manlius. Manlius, okay. And any talents for the uh, for the no, board? He's, he's spending three. Very good. So that is a three, four, five, or a six on a 1d6. He gets it. Well done. Didn't even need to spend money. All right, so go ahead and grab yourself a knight. And while you're doing that, will you be changing faction leader? No. Sponsoring any games? Uh, no. Okay. All right. Um, all right. We're now doing a, a pop quiz here because uh, something occurred to me, and I don't know whether we've been doing this right to date, but um, what I'd like people to check now, so I'd like you to open up your rule books or scroll across to the right-hand side of the virtual tabletop, I'd like you to look up knights. Okay? I'd like you to look up knights, and t besides the ability of them giving you an extra vote per knight, I believe there's another perk there that I don't think people have been taking into consideration and I haven't necessarily been talking about either at the appropriate time. So I'd like somebody to look up knights and tell me the perks of having knights, okay? Besides, uh, if I'm correct in my thinking here, besides getting additional votes. So let's see who's quickest. Uh... So 1.07.5. Okay, you want to read that to us? A player may attempt to attract one knight per initiative to one of his aligned senators in Rome by paying zero or more talents from the senator's personal treasury and rolling a die. If the sum of the die rolled and the number of talents paid is greater or equal to six, a knight is attracted to the center, place the knight marker on the card indicated indicating the total number of knights he controls. There is no limit to the number of knights that may eventually be controlled by a senator. For each knight the senator controls, he gains an extra vote in the Senate and an extra talent from the income during the revenue phase. Right, and there, there we go. That, that, that'll do, that's, that's all I wanted to highlight there. So who has not been adding talents in the revenue phase from their knights? Me. There's one. Has everybody else been adding revenue yeah. from their knights in, their, in yeah. their income? Yeah. yeah. Uh, some pronouns, have you been adding knights uh, revenue income? No. Uh, I'll just do it. It's one talent per knight. Yes. Yeah, you've been doing that, have you? Yeah. Good. Okay, so for example... Okay, well, three, so, four, five, six... Cool. Good. I just, yeah. I just, I just want to check because uh, I hadn't necessarily been announcing um, the night uh, revenue. So for Cornelius Dolabella, I'm going to give you the opportunity to acquire your um, missing knights. Now, noting you acquired a knight this round, is that correct? Uh, yeah. So I'm going to give you a two two additional talents now to put into your um, respective senators, uh, noting that you hadn't calculated it this round. Um, okay, thank but you. It sounds like everybody else is uh, caught up. So they're in your zone. Put them on your respective senators as you desire. Um, mm -hmm. That's right. So, for example, um, if we're looking at Civitus Panem faction and Flaminus ID 13, he has one knight. So uh, looking at the senator just as he is now, he gets a total of two talents each revenue phase on his own, one for his senatorial income and one for his knight. Um, is everybody happy with that? Mm -hmm. Okay. Just, um, just to follow up from that, in case you don't know, uh, so you can pressure knights. 
uh, instead of rolling to attract a knight, a player may opt to pressure a knight he has in his faction for contributions and in doing so loses their support. He announces how many of his knights under each of his senators will pressure. He will pressure and rolls a die for each to determine the amount of talents gained. This, this money must be added to each controlling senator's respective personal treasury and the presumed knight is returned to the bank. That's, that's a great point, and I'm, I'm pleased you've brought that up uh, for everybody to remember going forwards. I don't often see that occurring in many of the sessions that I've played. However, it is still an option, and perhaps uh, what I can do when announcing that and stepping people through the initiative steps is to go, would you like to attract or pressure a knight, just to remind people. Um, so that, that's uh, great to bring up. Uh, can you transfer knights between senators? No, you cannot. So when, when a yeah. senator with knights uh, reaches sort of eight or nine, it mm -hmm. might be worthwhile pressuring them. Uh, yeah. Look, you've, you've, you've hit the nail on the head. That's good. That's a great strategy point you brought up there. Well done. But sorry, so you, it's you recruit or you pressure a knight, or can you do both? No, one or the other. Okay, yeah. cool. Because you can pressure more than one knight that's, that you control. Good point, yeah. All right, I believe we've finished all of our initiatives now. It was a pretty good set of Rome uh, rolls and card draws. Let's put Rome in order. Okay, so everybody holding a major office right now needs to acquire a major marker. If anyone would like to do that now. So our dictator, master of horse, censor, um, Rome console, field console. Everyone needs to grab yourself a major marker from the left-hand side of the playboard and pop that on your senator's card. Let the uh, sensor know what's going on. I'll give everybody a, a moment to do that. Did you master, of horse, on... master of Horse as well, did you say? Yeah, Master of Horse as well. Let's Can see. you be prosecuted if you're not in Rome? Uh, if you're not in Rome, uh, you, you, you can't be prosecuted. Hey. Even in absentias, smart censure. So it's the same for governors. Uh, governors can obviously become corrupt while they're away from Rome, but they will retain their corruption marker until they return. So that's a little bit different for governors. Okay, I've lost my marker. Where the hell did I put it? Uh, I can see it in the bottom left of your faction area. That's it. Okay. Are we supposed to have slid the corruption bit out from our cards now? Yes, correct. Uh, if you took concessions, which essentially if you had concessions on the board minus the shipbuilding one, uh, they should all be uh, corrupt portion showing, just to remind the sensor. So hmm. sensor as well, yeah? Did yep, sensor as well, yep. Yep, the current sensor yeah. as well also gets one. That's a bit of a shame. <laughs> should have gone whole hog with him. <laughs> um, so make sure Master of Horse has a corruption marker as well. He's not in. He's not in Rome. Uh, true, but just for completeness' sake, I'll grab you one. So why am I put it on him? For, oh, for, it's for, corrupt, but he can't be. That's, that, that, that's right. In fact, yeah. we won't use a, a major. Well, it's the same. It's a corrupt marker. Well, it's like Julius. He's corrupt, but he's not in Rome, so he can't get done at the moment. Okay. Is there something? Because you can summon people back, can't you? So maybe there's no way to summon someone back and then prosecute them. Uh, not at that stage of the Senate. Hmm. Uh, so when does oh, Julius yeah. get back? When he was summoned back? Does he yeah, get Julius, back is, already, Julius is already back. Yep, Julius is already back. Yep, he was withdrawn at the last Senate phase. Oh, so he's back. Okay. He, yeah, yeah, he, Julius, he, needs, Julius needs a minor marker, so does Larry. Uh, the corruption portion of their concessions show that. Makes that. Yep. Oh, okay. Yep, so the, the, that's why the corrupt bar exists on the concession cards, just mm -hmm. to show that's that's the minor corruption. I'm just minorly corrupt, you know. <laughs> Nothing major like you guys. If you're going to do it, you may as well do it big. <laughs> That's right. Okay, now I'd like the current dictator, the highest ranking available officer, he needs to roll a 1d6 to see uh, if any uh, farm... Oh, sorry, sorry. Yeah? Who, who pulled out my corruption markers on Furious? Uh, not I. Oh, that might have been me. Sorry. Well, I never collected money from him, so he's not corrupting me. Uh, you, you would have, because it's compulsory. Sorry? It's compulsory to collect concessions if they're on the field. Oh, I didn't take the concessions. All right, so I'm going to give you some money then. Uh, how much do you need for your concessions? Sorry. They were hidden. Can't you, you can't hide it once they've been corrupted. 
Uh, I, I don't know. So let's just let's, let's, let's roll back again. So did you collect money from your concessions this round? Those co those concessions were like that. Yeah, that's fine. And did you collect money from them this round? No, I did not. Okay, you'll need to do that. I'm going to give you the money for Furious, and then you'll become corrupt. Cause Why? It's, cause, You're corrupt. You just don't know it yet. Because <laughs> if, if a concession is on the field, it is compulsory to take those corrupt that that that, okay. that, that money. If they're the on the money field, money is just resting in your account. Yeah, you have to you have to take the corruption if you've played a concession. Oh, that's a bummer. Uh, so how much money are you getting? <laughs> well, that's another seven. All right. Five, six, seven. That's it. All right. So let's bring this up. And uh, excuse me, everyone. I'm coming through your faction yeah, area. Sorry. That's worse than me for getting the knights. You blew seven dollars. All right. There you go. You've got your money on Furious's card now. Uh, and that's why the corruption portions are now showing. That's right. So if a concession is on the field, uh, it is compulsory uh, to take that money and then therefore become minorly corrupt. Uh, the only way corruption, uh, sorry, the only way concessions can be with, removed is either from death uh, or successful prosecution. Okay, so so you either want to either you want to get prosecuted uh, or you want to die. <laughs> That's the only way you can remove your concessions. Um, but in the meantime, try and rake in that money, eh? Okay. Um, <laughs> Okay, so... Can I uh, redistribute that now, given that it was... Yeah, if, if you wish to redistribute that funding now, feel, feel free to do so. No, it's all right. I'll leave it there. What are we doing? I'm the censor. No, uh, I'm not. <laughs> uh, okay, so from here, I'd like the dictator, highest-ranking available officer, to roll 1d6. The second Punic War is going around destroying farms now, and we need to see which... Max Pharma concessions, if any, get destroyed. So if I could please have the dictator, uh, Fabius Maximus from the Optimates, roll the 1d6, please. Okay, who's got Tax Pharma concession number one? Uh, I believe uh, that is uh, Sulpicious. Yeah. Can you yeah. please go ahead and throw that in the destroyed concessions box under the Curia on the right-hand side of the board? Uh, yep. You'll see it under Repopulating Roman Enemy Leaders. Okay, yeah. so that farm has been destroyed, but there's an opportunity to eventually get those farms back later. So that... There you go. There's another way to uh, have. Uh, yeah, so, right there. <laughs> so there you go. So uh, the the uh, the Carthaginians, the Punics, uh, are coming in destroying farms through Italy. So we've already lost one there. Okay. All right. Uh, let's uh, move on. Um, that's all. Uh, here, here history order. for you. So the yeah. good news for Fabius is that they didn't destroy any of your farms, Fabius. <laughs> Huh. And that was a ploy by Hannibal to try and get the people against his tactic of um, not engaging him in war. So that was so that the Senate uh, would say, well, it's fine for you to not go and actually take him on in battle because it's not your farms that have been destroyed. There, there you go. That's good. I like I like hearing those facts. So if you've got facts like that, please keep sharing them. That's uh, that's what this is all about. That's good. Okay, so we're now in the population phase, folks. We now need to have our good choirs to add two to the unrest level for your two unprosecuted wars that are sitting there. Um, so the, the choirs is going to go from one to three in the state unrest level. So the, the people are nervous about the amount of unrest, uh, unprosecuted wars out there. So that's going to go from one to three. And now uh, we're going to go over to the highest ranking available officer, which is currently... Uh, the dictator, and uh, he's going to do his usual speech, followed by his 3d6 roll, which will commence the Senate phase, uh, and then it's party on. You guys know how the Senate works. Uh, I really shouldn't have to be saying much these days. Um, so uh, if there's no final questions from me, handing over to the dictator uh, to uh, get this Senate party started. All right, for you guys. Uh, salve, Romans. Um... It is always darkest before dawn. We face extremely difficult, difficult times due to our extremely competent yet unlucky uh, dictator in the war. <laughs> yeah, unlucky. Um, but it's time to raise our heads, look forward, and defeat the barbarian scum. So please join me, the all Romans. And let's push these barbarians out. Thank you. All right. Three, three D six. That is correct. 
I'd like to say an OC, an Australian politician, say, oh, look, sorry, guys, been a bit unlucky this year. We had those bad omens, though, remember? So. Okay, so you've rolled a, a, 13. a 13 plus your popularity of 1, which is 14, minus 3 takes us back, 13, 12, 11. So let's look at uh, 11 on the table. There's no change. No change. No change. We'll take that. <laughs> so uh, what we call a mediocre speech. <laughs> At least it wasn't a bad one. Exactly, I'll take that. <laughs> Even given those odds, that was a pretty good speech. Oh. True. True. Uh, for those watching along at home, I've brought up the cheat sheet uh, to show you uh, what our Senate is now going to be stepping through. All right. So no one's, um, no one's really come up to me to talk about who the next uh, consul should be. So I may have to you know, draw from the pool of um, best possible men. Um, would anyone like to suggest anyone with uh, some potential benefits? Well, we want to fight a war. We do. So we need someone who's strong militarily and has some good luck. <laughs> yeah. uh, so, well, I guess on that front, I'm going to make a nomination of, uh, I think one of our those uh, people should go, whether he's... Uh, Cornelius or Flaminius uh, should be nominated. They got some good military, and he hasn't lost a war yet, <laughs> unlike mm -hmm. some of the others. So uh, no, we never actually lost. We had a stalemate. Oh, Chris, save it. <laughs> 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 you got negative one popularity on you, Julius. So I don't know if I can trust you. <laughs> that's yeah. at least my uh, my two cents, my two talents. I think that's um, fair enough. And Chris has been running quite a few double ones and uh, ones uh, this turn already. So <laughs> I agree that um, well, my feeling is um, that uh, Flaminus or Flaminius would make an excellent choice. Um, um, this is for field console you're talking about? Well, uh, it's two consoles. They've got to work it out between themselves. Oh. Um, then from a who is going to run the Senate point of view, I think it is very difficult to overlook the um, oratory skill of um, of uh, Alias the Younger. Uh, unfortunately, Cato can't. Oh, obviously, Cato would be my first choice, but we can't have him because he was uh, consul last time. Um, so, you know, just looking with an objective eye across the Senate, I do feel Alias the Younger uh, should be given a chance. Uh, what faction's that, sorry? Is that yours? Oh, is the Optimates? Oh, I hadn't noticed. Um, <laughs> just as a, a quick point of uh, interest, make sure uh, what we should have done before hitting into the Senate phase, just everybody needs to make sure their faction votes are correct, yes. which is uh, or oratory plus knights. <laughs> So, I don't hear any other people being put forward, so... Um, sorry, oratory plus knights. Um, okay, good distraction tactics there, Warwick. Um. <laughs> um, I, I also perhaps need to Pardon. point out as well that... Um, good discussion that we're having so far, and it doesn't invalidate this discussion, but because the dictator is, in fact, at war, he's not actually in the Senate right now, so that needs to go to the next highest-ranking available officer. They are, in fact, the current presiding magistrate and currently running the Senate phase, as we see right now, which is, in fact, the Rome Consul, which is Cato the Elder. So Cato the Elder is, in fact, our presiding magistrate right now. Ah, OK. Well, I, I agree with what Cato has just been saying. <laughs> But I hand over to Marcus to, uh, you know, more formally um, interpret his words. <laughs> um, okay, so we won't backpedal too much. We will need to look into the future. So um, I'm taking nominations for uh, the, the, the two consoles. Um, so uh, what, what we've heard so far has been very valid. 
Um, I really like the idea of um, um, Sulpicius as a consul or Claudius from the Hand of God party, but I'm only looking at one from that party. Well, uh, yeah, I think that someone from Sivibus, uh maybe his Flaminius would be a good other solution. He's got four military if we uh, send him to war. Or can the dictator still go to war if we recall him? Okay. So um, what we need to notify right now is that the... Um, we need to double check. The, the dictator, I believe, is now a proconsul. Mm -hmm. And that means the master of horse would have uh, immediately come back to Rome. So uh, probably worth checking right now um, in our rules section under either proconsuls or the dictator section itself, uh, if you guys want to jump across and have a look at that. But I believe that'll be the case, is uh, the, di the dictator is now a proconsul and the master of horse would have returned to Rome at this stage because of that stalemate. So let's uh, let's just double check that now. So pro consul yep. can't be nominated then? No, so it says the current consuls and dictator, if any, may not be elected consul this term until the tradition of Rhodes law is passed. There you go. So they, they still will not be eligible, but um, um, it's it's really it's mostly just nomenclature right now, but we it will be relevant for Cornelius, perhaps for other positions, if he is in fact in Rome eligible for things like censor, for example, or uh, Pontifus Maximus, or whatever the case may be, because um, he may not in fact still be at war. He perhaps would have returned. So let's just double check that if uh, people are looking through their rule books. So what was that question again? So um, now that we've seen a stalemate, I believe the dictator becomes a proconsul, and the master of horse returns back to Rome. That's what we need to check. As it was not a victory or a loss. It was, in fact, a stalemate. So like, like other consoles, uh, Rome or Field Console, if they uh, had a stalemate, they would have become a pro-console. Uh, in this case, it was another stalemate. In this, I believe that the dictator also becomes a pro-console. And will stay there until either reinforced or withdrawn by the Senate. Um, so, if everybody's looking at the instructions, look at the pro console section, if you're doing a control F find, or look under the dictator section, that should hopefully give us our clues. Uh, or even the master of horse section, which uh, follows that. No, that one doesn't talk about when he goes home. Uh, I'm also having a look here now. No, that's, that's where I found it. I'll, I'll, get, I'll get the number to um, text your phone. Your yeah, so I don't see it in the master of horse there. Oh, but it does say, just so everyone knows, the dictator or another senator may be immediately appointed to elect a dictator again. Right. That's right. Uh, the other thing we can check for is under the combat phase, under stalemate. That may also give us a clue as to what happens as well. If people would like to go to the uh, combat phase and look up stalemates. Thanks so much. Awesome. Thanks for calling me back. Uh, so it says, yeah, the Roman commander remains in command as proconsul unless recalled or killed. There we go. So, uh, so that that's answers half our question, I guess, is the dictator is now a proconsul. So what we'll do is we'll have uh, the current dictator um, will take his token into the centre uh, or back to the, the field over there for the moment. And uh, he gets a pro consul. I'm just doing that for him now. All right, so he's got his pro consul token. And because he's not a dictator anymore, there's uh, no master of horse. So the master of horse is now back in Rome. Okay. So I'll move his token away. Um, and that's back over there. And we'll nick his master of horse label and put that back over in its home. Um, okay. So that, there we go. So that, that makes sense there now. So Fabius Maximus is pro consul, still currently sitting on the war card. Master of Horse uh, has uh, has left; is back in Rome. Um, but but right as as uh, was rightly pointed out, the same person can be reappointed dictator if desired, and because he's already in the war card, he gets appoint a Master of Horse, which would follow him, etc., etc. So um, th there's, those options are there. Anyway, that's we've we've sorted that out now. Um, I think we can continue. 
So the um, master of horse doesn't get a pro comp. He's not get a green token. Uh, so actually, good point. Does Fabius Maximus already have a PC now? Master of Horse, I I'm not actually sure about. Um, Master of Horse gets all the all the risk and none of the glory. Um, let's just double check. Um, Master of Horse. See, for example, the Master of Horse doesn't get anything on a victory, right? Uh, and if the dictator is killed, the Master of Horse is also killed. Uh, the Master of Horse can also be killed by the Mortality Chit Draw. Um, but um, let's, uh, if somebody does a prior, uh, does a control F on uh, prior console, um, and that might see if that appeals uh, against the Master of Horse. At this, at this stage, because it is a major office, and it does in fact have a HRA rating, I'm inclined to give it one, because um, uh, it was an appointment. So... Um, and he doesn't really have one anyway. Yep, so let's let's give him one. Go ahead and grab yourself a prior console marker. Yep, I'm happy with that. Actually, can I raise a point? Yes, please. Um, so, although I did an autumn speech, that should have been Kate of the Elder's um, speech, and actually Kate of the Elder has popularity of six, not one. Sure, uh, and because of the ramifications for that, I'm happy to redo that. So if you want to go uh, Indominus re-roll... Um, because, right, it would have been the, the senator in... Well, actually, hold, hold fast. Let's just double-check. Let's read the population phase if it's very specific about the HRAO in Rome. Um, so let's look at that phase through our instructions here. Forum population. Here we go. State of the Republic. The highest-ranking available officer. So it doesn't say anything about being in Rome. So that's valid. So what we had with the dictator giving that address was valid still. So he was doing okay. it uh, via video conference. <laughs> <laughs> so that, no, that, that's fine. It doesn't say sure. about being... Um, well, unless the definition of HRAO is, in fact, in Rome. Is there a glossary? Let's do a quick check. Yeah. Not, not on the VTT, but I think the rule book actually has it. Uh, Somebody's got the uh, rule book open, wants to do a control F against HRAO and look in the glossary to see if it defines, quote, in Rome. <clears throat> this is a good check. This is a good checking, everyone. How are we going? Oh, the uh, first official on the following list are present in Rome. Ah, so it is in fact in Rome. So, yes. so in that case, then so we need to reverse yes, <laughs> what we just said. So, well, is it, yeah, so it's dictator, Rome, console, field console. Yeah, no, that's, right, that's so that. dictator is normally the HRAO, but because they're not in Rome, it goes to the next one, which is the Rome console. Uh, so therefore, the Rome console should have done the population phase speech. Uh, so the unrest level is going to go back to one for the moment, um, if I'm not mistaken. Um, and How much did it go up by? No, there was a no change. There was, there was a no change. So, oh, so it, was on, it stays at three for the moment, right? Two, yep. yeah, two. Uh, no, I changed it to a three for some reason. Oh, did you? Oh, okay. Yeah, it was, it was that's right, on, on three, but it didn't change from the three from the last roll. But anyway... So it was let's, one plus two unrest for the uh, that's two right. unrest because of the wars that the active wars that were. That, that, that's yeah. right. So three for now. All right. So if we can have uh, Indominus roll for Cato the Elder, do his three d six, gets a seven plus his po uh, popularity there of six, uh, thirteen um, okay. minus three, which is ten, uh, plus one to the unrest level. Is my math, <laughs> is my math correct there? I think it is. That wasn't the luckiest of rolls. Uh, no bad omens to consider there. Mm. No, that's right. It was, it was a lower roll, but his population, uh, popularity saved him there. Um, so we only get one to the unrest level. This is good. We're finding um, corrections on the fly. This is very good. That means there should be a, a smaller news report uh, this week, so that's good. <laughs> um, and the prior console marker. Yes, you got one? Well, no, I put it back. Right. Indicate senator who's held either a console or dictator major office. Look at you guys finding it all the right. So very good. Okay, so we've managed to also confirm that as well. So uh, thank you for your diligent research and honesty. So that's good. All right, we've sorted that out as well. Okay, so it had to be dictator or console to be a prior console, and I guess that makes sense. 
because uh, Master of Horse is not, in fact, a dictator or a console. Well, stuff going Master of Horse. All the risks and none of the benefits. Right, right. Um, but but it is beneficial for the Republic. There you go. So. It is right. Okay. <laughs> beneficial for the Republic. Okay. Now that we've uh, we've started to climb back out of the rabbit holes, I can see uh, Cornelius Dolabella there uh, recovering. Um, back to the presiding magistrate now that we know is Cato the Elder, uh, who is in fact in Rome to continue with your Senate session. <laughs> oh boy, very good. Okay, so um, I've thought long and hard about this, um, but I'm willing to, uh, before I make a decision on who I want to put forward as uh, next year's uh, consul, uh, what, what were the numbers? Like, so <clears throat> I think that uh, we are at strife. We are at war at the moment. So someone with experience in the war would make a great Rome consul. So I'm thinking Julius um, of the Reapers Party would make a great consul uh, of Rome. And I think also that Cornelius uh, would be a great field consul. Um, uh... Is Cornelius eligible as a field consul? Uh, yes, he is in fact in present in Rome now, so he's returned, so he is eligible for a consulship, yes. Okay. So that we could then uh, let those to debate on whether we want to have uh, enable the dictatorship again or whether we would uh, move forward from where we are. <laughs> um. Yeah, I'll go. Oh, I'm, I'm satisfied with that, so I think that seems Are there, good. Is there any consequence for someone having a popularity of minus one? Uh, I'm going to let you answer that, and I'm pleased you found that. Mm -hmm. I, was, I was wondering that. So one second. You're right. Thank you, John. So what was How did he get minus one? Uh, he lost... Um, <laughs> losses in the war i believe it was correct that's right he, he's taken on over in fact two wars he's uh garnered losses which put him at minus one that's why i don't reckon we should have him as the field it goes from, it goes from zero i didn't, I didn't lose zero the last zero. one did they get a minus uh, one for their lost war uh yeah oh, I, we've we've now calculated uh for every uh military commander that has faced losses has in fact uh, taken on the necessary punishment. Yep. So how right. do we get rid of the minus one? Uh, you need to gain popularity. Games. So you can get, uh, you know, hold uh, games and stuff like that. So, yeah. for yeah. so for example, you can get some victories in battle. You can throw some games, put in some land bills. Um, you can. Um, um, there's, there's talks about going into exile, but you can't do that. That's not a rule in the game that we're currently following. Look, it's, it's one less than zero, which is where most of us are at. So I really don't think it's... <laughs> uh, two of my guys have got positive guys, so... Oh, so we should vote two of your guys in? Is that what you're <laughs> yeah, yeah, maybe. You put forward a good argument, sir. <laughs> <laughs> well, one of my guys... So you're, you're yeah, well, well this, Cornelius uh, has got four, and he's got a military of four, so I think that he's a definite... Well, Cato has got six, but he can't be voted in again. So he's willing to put uh, his name in, in favour of yeah. Gil, who I think is... Uh, yeah, yeah. but just great. remember, yeah, because we just used the popularity on the um, on that speech role there. So it is whoever ends up being Rome Consul, the, um, the popularity is quite important. Yeah. Fair enough. Um, we can't send poor old Julius to war again. He's he's getting a bit fragile. Yeah, that's uh, that's that's also a very valid point because he's an elder senator. He can't leave Rome. Uh, he can be a, he can certainly be elected to any position. He just can't leave Rome. And so, well, we, neither, uh, neither Fluvius nor Sepplicus, Sulpicius, uh, you know, shine in in extraordinary powers in any other way. So. Um, they may have more popularity, but beyond that, True. we don't have going for them. Um, but we've still we've still got Fabius out there, correct? Yeah, but Fabius is a dictator, so he can't. Um, yeah, so he can't be voted consul. Yeah, okay, but he, but he's still out prosecuting the war, though. Correct. Yes. So he's not actually eligible for a position anyway because he's still out there. Yeah. Yes. So he's not eligible for field console either, then? 
Correct. No, but he's, el he's eligible for dictator if we want to do that. Because I yeah. don't think dictator has the restrictions of being, quote, in Rome, um, if somebody wants to check that, but I believe that to be the case. Um, yeah. Well, I think we should be going for a dictator again, so does it really matter who we vote for Rome yeah, Consul? exactly. So Julius and Cornelius are the, uh, the two suggestions. Okay, yep. I'll call a vote. Um, pro... Uh, the, the Tacunius party votes... Oh, shit, I forgot that. Is, uh, is the scriber happy with the current proposal on the floor for vote? Uh, to Julius and Cornelius, um, proposed by Cato. Yep. Okay, okay. go. So I've got to just add my votes again. It's just oratory plus night. Correct, yep, that's right. Uh, I vote 18 in favour. So what parties Cornelius belong to? Civibus, me. Oh, all right. Can I have the votes from the Civibus party, please? I'll do. Yeah, no, I'm just thinking. <laughs> um, well, no, it just ties up Cornelius again if he ends up having to go out to war again. Well, it's a time up from doing. He's a busy uh, man. <laughs> as I realised the last time around. Look, if you're successful, you can become uh, very, very uh, influential. Uh, if we, if you're not successful, then I really pity the state of Rome next. Uh, next <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Ooh. Ten four. Ten four. All right, can I have the Reapers Party vote, please? Uh, yes, uh, I want to change that. Uh, 10-4. Hand of God? Uh, 16-4. And finally, the Optimates. Uh, I'll uh, do, I think, 13 against. Thank you very much. Uh, it's motion passes. Uh, okay. <laughs> but Julius can't go off and be the general because he's too old now. Well, yeah. Okay. Well, he can be the general, but he can't leave, right? Yes. Okay, so now that we know who our new uh, uh, consular elects are, who's that? It's uh, who and who? Cornelius. Cornelius, yep, and? Julius. Julius, okay. So uh, like we normally do, we're now going to take our break at this time. We'll let those uh, two... A curators of those factions talk amongst themselves about who's going to be which console. Uh, everyone else can have a leg stretch, refill your beverages, um, and uh, we can come back soon if you isn't like. Isn't it? Because we're going to have to talk about a strategy going into this war, which yeah, includes well, what's, Yeah, but it's the two of you. And the dictator, I think, is your choice as well. I thought that was a console choice. Uh, yeah, they can also talk about that at this time as well if they like. Yep. Um, so when, when we all come back from the break, uh, we can uh, welcome in the Rome console and then the Rome console and in conjunction with the field console can uh, anoint the dictator. So, uh, yep, let's, let's take a break now. We'll come back very shortly for all those all right. watching the uh, stream. Uh, don't go away. We'll be about five minutes. Okay, and we're back from the break now. I'm just checking audio levels. So we've got our senator's audio back online as well. I think my audio is working. Good. So uh, recapping for those that are joining us uh, on the stream after the break, the Senate uh, under the presiding magistrate, which is currently Cato the Elder, has just passed a proposal to bring in two new uh, consular candidates, which is Cornelius uh, up here, ID number one, and Julius, uh, ID number four. Um, and uh, they will now take the floor very shortly to talk about who's going to be Rome and Field Consul. And uh, I think it's no no um, uh, no secret that they also plan to perhaps appoint a dictator as well. Uh, I don't think everybody was present, but it is worth noting that um, we checked the rules and Fabius Maximus is not eligible to, for dictator because he's not in Rome. Um, so uh, he is not eligible for the dictator appointment uh, just for uh, the records. Okay. Uh, okay. All right, over to uh, Julius and, <laughs> uh, and Cornelius uh, to you, hold their discussion. 
Can he be named uh, Master of Horse if he's not in a row? Uh, again, I, I don't believe it's the case. Uh, I think it has to come Well, the Master of Horse has to be there, doesn't he? Oh, he's got to go with the dictator. He yeah. goes with the dictator. So I, yeah. I, I, I immediately been thinking, no, I'm just going back to have a quick look at the rules now. Um, but Because uh, to get the benefit from the Master of Horse, he has to be over there in the campaign, doesn't he? Well, he is. <laughs> yeah. Uh, no, so it says here, rule uh, 09.33, um, and appoints at his uh, as his master of horse any aligned senator in Rome. So, again, uh, that he's not eligible for master of horse. And we don't get the benefit of his um, half losses thing either as master of horse. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, so um, all we're doing now is we're waiting on um, uh, Cornelius and Julius to finish their conversation about who's going to be who, uh, and we'll, we'll wait to hear from them. But again, no rush, guys. Take your time about deciding about who's going to take the top job, and then in normal, uh, traditional, pompous circumstance, uh, if the field console could announce and welcome in, uh, give a, an introduction to the Rome console, who will then take on uh, presiding magistrate. <laughs> Uh, what, what did we agree that Julius was going to be? Oh, well, they just. Oh, sorry. It's well, up to you to decide. Well, Julius can't be field console because he can't leave right. Oh, so there's no. Well, uh, just for you, Cornelius Calum, I've just put the pro console marker back on Fabius. He stays pro console until he's brought back. Right. Sorry, keep carry on. Okay. Well, then there's no real decision, is there? Um, so Cornelius will be field consul and Julius will be Rome consul. So you have to, field consul has to announce the new Rome consul. So I, um, I welcome back our illustrious, um, most successful, um, field consul, uh, Julius. Uh, uh, Welcome in, him, him in as, uh, as Rome Consul. Over uh, to you, please. Thank, thank you, Senator. That's saying a lot about Rome, isn't it? Hilarity of mine is a successful field consul. <laughs> yeah, so, um, right, so we've got now. Was I have to what, propose? Uh, let's 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 slow down a little bit first. Um, okay. So let's go ahead and add our five influence uh, to each of our respective senators who just gained their posts. So Cornelius needs to add plus five influence to his tally, uh, and Julius needs to add another plus five to his seventeen. Um, so I can help with numbers for both of you if you tell me what markers you need. One and four. You need a one and a four. I'm going to have to make some yes. more. All right. Uh, and what do you need there, uh, 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 Two twos, 22 now. Okay. There is a four. I'm, I'm working on the one for you. Okay, there's your one. Okay, and you need two twos, okay? Yes. Um, there's your two twos. I'll take the 17 away. Thank you. Oh, that, that went weird. Yeah, I'm stealing guys for a for Oh, okay. Part. Yeah, yeah. All right. Sorry, I, I put that seven down the bottom if you want to take it. Um, I got it. Yeah, perfect. Okay. Okay, so you guys have, uh, um, in fact, I found some more in the sand pit if you want to add those to your pile. I've just dropped them in underneath there. Uh, okay. Um, and everybody's updating their faction influence tallies on there, both in their play area as well as their uh, influence track marker. Uh, and if you haven't had a change, perhaps it's always good to check your current faction influence, make sure it's correct uh, for the board. Uh, Warwick, could I have a three and a zero for my faction influence, please? You may indeed. Stand by. I assume that goes up by five as well. Yep, you bet you believe it. Three and zero. There you go. Hey, yeah. who pinched that? You, you could have the two and the five, was. I'll, I'll, I'll take the two and I'll take the two and the five. Where'd the three go? Uh, I don't know. I saw tokens flying around everywhere. I think people are pinching tokens. <laughs> uh, I'm going three and zero. Can someone pinch me zero? Ah, oh, really? <laughs> yeah. Someone pinch my three. Uh, all right. Who's who's currently moving tokens? <laughs> There's a zero there for you, Aldous. 
elbow. Uh, I can see three and zeros moving around. Okay, yep. Thank you. Some, sometimes the, Thank you very much. One thing I noticed about roll 20 is that sometimes it's a bit slow, so you might pick up a token, but somebody else has already picked it up concurrently and they can see some funny token movements. Uh, so perhaps announce uh, going forwards if you're picking up tokens. Uh, it hasn't been too bad so far. Uh, now, the Reaper's Party is still missing a number. What one do you need there? Uh, three. three. All right. Your three. There you go. You can have your three back. There Thank it is. You. Uh, everyone else happy with their faction influence tallies right now? Yes. Good. Make no, my... which mine was higher, but yeah. No, it's no. Okay. Uh, no, make it's sure your uh, influence track markers are also correct for your faction influence. Uh, uh, and then, uh, yeah, right back over to the, the new presiding magistrate to uh, continue with the session. The new magistrate? Who's the new magistrate? Um, uh, that's Cornelius Dolabella with the Reapers Party and Julius as the Rome Consul. All oh, right. Uh, so the the Rome Consul is also referred to as a magistrate. He is the presiding magistrate, so the, the current uh, lead uh, orator, if you like, the controller of the Senate. Right. So okay. you you are the boss. Right. So, uh, well, we've already appointed Cornelius as the um, field consul, haven't we? Uh, yeah, you yeah. agreed. You agreed between each other that uh, Cornelius would be field consul. Yep. So that has been completed. Okay. So what we got to do now? We have to make proposals, or I have to make proposals. Uh, if you look at your cheat sheet, if you look at your cheat sheet, that will tell you. Um, but also a reminder that um, um, there's also the option for dictator as well at some point as well. Okay. Um, so look at your cheat sheet. That gives you all the things that can be done and in what order. Uh, so what phase are we? Oh, oh, we're in the. You're in the Senate phase. Okay. Yes, uh, but if you're looking at your, your, your individual cheat sheet there, on the right-hand side, you'll see consoles, number one has just been done. You'll see an option for a Pontifex Maximus as well in blue. Uh, oh, and, then, the and then number three is Dictator. Um, so uh, as you are the boss, if you decide that there needs to be a Pontifex Maximus, now would be the good time to do that. Well, it would probably be a good idea if we could get the gods on side. Uh, does anyone have any nominations for a uh, Pontifex Maximus? Yeah, I think that... Um, Claudius, he's a young and up and coming guy. Uh, I think he's a good choice. I think um, Junius uh, was was praying to me earlier, um, talking about how important a good Pontifex Maximus would be. Uh, I'd just like to add a counter that uh, <laughs> the Optimates. Uh, last time we trusted them on religious uh, matters, we had a uh, f foul omen. Yeah, that didn't uh, work out so well, did so, it? Yeah, I think, Chris, uh, it's be important to maybe diversify the, um, the religion. Yeah, I've just got a person for that, which is Aurelius. He's a wise old man. He's uh, He's been in the, in the Senate for a long time now. He knows the machinations, so he's uh, he's going to be uh, very uh, astute in, his, in this but, um, role. But really. who, who did draw that evil omens card again? Who did? <laughs> <laughs> the market? <laughs> I think it was. <laughs> so, um, just just a tip for Cornelius Dolabella, who's our current Rome consul, and I've, mm -hmm. I've stressed this before in previous sessions. So, I'm very happy for you to be hearing suggestions, and that's perfectly within your remit. But remember, you are the boss, all right? And ultimately, you should be picking or proposing, at the very least, anyway, uh, yeah. somebody or someone that would be advantageous to you, uh, particularly for Pontifus Maximus position. Um, it is more about the individual rather than for Rome. Um, so this is all about strategy. So you need to be thinking about strategy. Uh, and remember, because you control the Senate, right? So you garner what the proposal is and in what vote order that, that people vote upon as well, okay? So, uh, yeah, I've seen a lot of um, uh, passive presiding magistrates, and that's not always necessarily a bad thing. Um, but remember... Um, besides keeping Rome alive, you're also trying to be the most influential and the most popular in Rome. Um, never forget that that is your your other goal. Okay, so uh, just in other words, don't doesn't matter to be a little bit aggressive. I just want to. Put what does a pontifex need? Is there anything that like they don't, poetry or they, poetry. they need a successful proposal? That's what they need a successful proposal to pass. But to do the job, but uh, to do the job, they need to have been voted in. That's all they need. That's it. Yep. Okay. 
Uh, I need to pick someone who I think will support uh, my. <laughs> uh, let me. Aurelius. Hi. I do think, um, again, Junius was talking about how he thought that, um, you know, the Reapers in particular are a very uh, devout group of people and thought Valerius would make an excellent priest. Well, yeah, that's right. Um, a, a priest is uh, the remit of the Pontifus Maximus. So the Pontifus Maximus will get to decide that. Now, Aurelius is wise enough to know that religion is really for the, for the poor and, and it's a show. Really what matters here is politics. So he will back uh, whoever votes for him or whoever nominates him into the uh, party. And he's got the Pontifus Maximus perm too, if you have a look at it. Yeah. Yep, that's it. Can't, <laughs> yeah. can't vote Sorry, against... I, shouldn't, I shouldn't be influencing proceedings. I apologise. <laughs> and he's got the what? He's got the perm. Yeah. Oh, the... Aurelius's hair. Is that what you're talking about? Yeah, that's right. Yeah. The Rome throw. <laughs> he makes, he makes up the <laughs> I think I think uh, just, just to balance this out, you know, once again, uh, as Malcolm said, uh, Marcus and the uh, Tarquinius party, they were the ones who got the foul omens last time and the Optimates failed us. So I think we should choose a another party uh, that hasn't failed us in the past. So... It doesn't have to be me, you know. I'm I'm open to somebody like uh, uh, Flaminius of Sibibus, for instance, uh, or of course whoever. Yeah, just a, just a neutral party. party on Australia. Neutral party, do we? Is, is there such a thing? <laughs> <laughs> In this case, yes. Uh, hang on, I'm trying to have a look around here. Wow. It's all right. Take your time, and when when you're happy. You can uh, announce your proposal, and then the moment you call for votes, that's it. It's game off, and then uh, people have to vote based on your order. Yeah. But I, I do think uh, age is an important factor, so we do want someone relatively young. Yes, I agree. Wisdom is more important than age. <laughs> <laughs> I'd agree with that. <laughs> but less likely to die. So, Optimus, who are you proposing? Uh, alias. He's a young man. He's our faction leader already, which I think just shows his promise and potential. <laughs> he only inherited that from his dead father, so he, <laughs> he actually never achieved anything. He's one of these young upstart who takes, you know, what is it? The first generation makes it, the second generation loses it or something? Right. Spends. So, so uh, Spends it. it's the third generation who is it. Mm -hmm. Okay, all right. I've I've decided I'll go with the um I'll go with the impressive hair and propose Aure Aurelius for the Pontifus Maximus. Pontifus, sure. yeah. Okay. Call to vote. That's okay. So. Uh, you, you, your cheat sheet won't say it, but at this point, now that you've uh, um, articulated your proposal, you'll now want to call for votes from the Senate, uh, and you can nominate the parties in any order that you choose. And uh, de particularly depending on whether the Senate could be split on a decision, the order in which votes occur could be very important. Okay, well, I now must, um, vote for Aurelius for Pontifex, and... We'll start off with the, oh, how do I pronounce this? Tarquinius. Is it, oh, just the Tarquinius. Well, that's it. The Tarquinius party. <laughs> Eight, 18 in favour, yeah. Uh, or is somebody else keeping a note of this as a scribe? Yeah, I'll give the note. Oh, okay. Fine. Right, thank you. All right. So, and uh, then the Reapers party, uh, well, I'll say 10 in favour. Well, trying to scroll around here and I'm getting myself in all sorts of trouble. That's all right. Uh, all right. The, the uh, Sir Census party? Uh, ten, ten against. Right? Sorry? Ten against. Ten against, okay. Sour grapes there, but anyway. <laughs> <laughs> 
Uh, uh, hand of God, how do you vote? Uh, 16 against. 16 against. And that leaves the, the optimates. Uh, 13 against. 13 against. Okay, so how'd that come out? Uh, That's 31, uh, sorry, 28, 4, and uh, 23, 33, 39 against. So, that does not pass. Um, uh, okay, yep. Hang on. Uh, just give me a moment. I need to respond to somebody. Then that doesn't trigger the thing that happened last time because you've got another faction to vote with you. Uh, yeah, the uh, unanimous against. Yeah. Good job. Oh, it's rough. <laughs> okay, sorry, I'm I'm right. Carry on. Uh well, uh, since so, can I just say now? Well, my guy didn't get in, so that's it. We'll forget about font effects. If you decide that to be the case, yeah. of course you could always nominate somebody else. But if you decide that that that's it, we're not worrying about it anymore. That is also a choice. Uh, yeah. I'd like to play a card, please, if that's all right. Oh, here we go. I'll just play it face up. Um, it's Tribune. Tribune, yep. Boo! Yay! We finally get to see one. I, I so, never see uh, enough of these. I'm so happy to see one. All right. So just a reminder um, for those uh, who are just a little bit dazzled by seeing a Tribune walk through the door, um, what this means is now, um, provided there's not a proposal already on the table, which there currently is not, um, uh, Posthumous RWM and his faction are now uh, have the right to announce a proposal uh, which must be voted on. Uh, now the presiding magistrate, presiding magistrate still gets to determine the order, um, uh, but the, the Tribune, or the person who played the Tribune, has the right to now put a proposal on the floor for consideration. Okay. Uh, so, under this uh, Tribune, I think that I would like to propose uh, that we vote uh, Flaminius to be the Pontifex Maximus. So... Uh, I'll give you guys a second. So that's uh, Flaminius of the Civibus Party. Uh, and then uh, I'll call for votes in a second once you guys think about uh, how we would like to vote on this. Which which will be oh, Cornelius uh, Dolabella. So Cornelius Dolabella will, will call for votes at his leisure. Oh, ah, okay. Yep. Okay. Yeah, yep. he's the presiding magistrate. So I and would in, like and to ask you about uh, your earlier statement where you said you wanted to have a neutral party involved in this, so he's not, anything <laughs> neutral in this case. He's not. He's not. Any, he's not one of my senators, so that's neutral in my eyes. This this process. Right, but he's, he's in part of the field council. Is in the same. Um, group. Well, I guess they're the same faction, but I think having God on his side might help. I think you should look up definition of uh, mm. neutral. <laughs> <laughs> so who's Forminius in? Civibus. That's mine. What's this number? 13? 13, yeah. Lucky number 13. Um, so who is it? Which senator proposed this? Uh, uh, it, was just, it was just a Tribune card played by a faction. In this case, it was the Hand of God faction. That's all you'll need to put. Okay. But I'm pleased you're taking notes on this. That's very good. Chris, I think that it would be very beneficial if we had God on our side. So I think that you should uh, vote in favour of this. Yeah, so this is for Minius and each on which, which party did you say? Civibus, top right. Civibus, yeah, I just can't see him there. But oh, it's, sorry, it's Fl Flaminius. Yeah, he's, yeah, he's the bottom senator out of the stack. Oh, Flaminius. Oh, right. Kukas. Well, I'd like to play a card. Oh, here we go. Uh, um, I, I think I know what you're going to play. you just got to wait just a little bit longer until they call for votes. You'll do it when your faction is called to vote. <laughs> It'll be interesting. It's, it's personal. Uh, um, uh, All right. Well, uh, I'm going to call a vote then. Try and get this Pontifex uh, thing out of the way. Uh, hello. Uh, I'm just going to give a reach out to uh, Pouch Trout uh, or Poached Trout, who's... Uh, uh, joined us this evening, Salwete uh, to uh, Salwe to you. Uh, you've come in at a very tense time. Uh, Tribune has uh, just put a proposal on the floor for Pontus Maximus, and Cornelius Dolabella and the Rome Consul has just called for votes. So let's see how this turns out. Yeah, the votes for Flaminius of the Civibus Party for Pontifex Maximus. So we'll we'll start off uh, with the Civibus Party. How do you vote? Ten four. Okay. Is that a convoy? 
Another convoy. <laughs> uh, nice. uh, the hand of God. Uh, 16 in favour. That's from the hand of God party, is it? Yep. Okay, and uh, Optimates? Uh, 13 against. <laughs> okay, I have to scribe this, keeping all this. <laughs> I am, I am. So okay. have support. Okay, the Reapers will vote 10-4. Uh, another, another convoy? Ten, ten in favour, yeah. And now that just leaves us the Tarquinius. Okay, I will play a card. <laughs> yes, you may. And I will veto. And <laughs> He's vetoed it. <laughs> it is off the floor. It is. It is quashed. It is absolutely. Oh, Tribune's flying everywhere. Love it. Okay, so that proposal is null and void, and Flaminius can uh, not be proposed again this round for Pontifus Maximus. I don't. Well, okay, so I tried out though. We've had two. Appreciate it. <laughs> we've had two proposals for Pontifus Maximus and both have failed so that's it, I've had enough of this religious stuff I'm, <laughs> I'm dropping that you tried, you tried the, the, the gods favour your, your I, efforts uh, I tried but all, the, all this party infighting and everything how the hell are we going to win a war? <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so now a dictator do we have anyone that isn't too old? There's several, but their military skills aren't up to up to top ratings. But there are several people you can choose. Well, uh, my my Sulpicius has a military rating of three, and Manlius, whose name just for, you know sort of shouts out victory, um, <laughs> yeah, he's got a military rating of three as well. Don't we have a couple of fours there? Uh, who? None that are old, none that are young enough to go to war. As a Flaminius come? Yeah. No, he's, he's um, he's got a he's uh, eight. Yeah. Uh. That's why I was saying before we shouldn't have actually suggest, um, put Cornelius as field consul because that stuffed him up. Yeah. He can go to war. We don't. Do we need a dictator though? That's we, a, don't, we don't need one. Yeah, because, okay. No, so, so we, we get the, the Master of Horse, though, so that basically we get an extra. Yeah, but, okay, so let's say if we go down to our wars, if we fight, um, we're not going to be able to fight uh, the Punic Wars because the strength is doubled and we don't have any money to raise fleets. So we would have to prosecute, let's say, the Gallic War, uh, which we only need 10 uh, land forces, which we already have. So then... With so his well. oh, I mean, but this doesn't cost us anything. Doing the dictator doesn't cost us anything extra and gets us two or three extra military strength. May as well. There's a vigorous nodding going well, on for a while. <laughs> well, we're not going to get the Punic Wars. We're not going to win against there at the no. moment. Oh, yeah, but them. hopefully we can reduce our losses against the Gallic War or whichever war we decide to um execute against so to me it, it makes sense doing the dictator so that we can get that advantage so what have we got here in the active wars we got the two punic wars there and then we've got the gallic war and the macedonian war oh that's in the unprosecuted right okay so, yes. Yeah. So, basically, those are costing us, is it 10 each or 20 each? 20. Remember. 20. Yeah, so. Yeah, and for them, we don't need fleets. Uh, we need. We do need five fleets, but, yeah, but we don't need to do the fleet battle. So, technically, we could actually, uh, how many people we've got, but if we do the maths, and actually maybe we should do the maths, we could actually split our forces. And then that gives us the dictator on one and the... Um, and the master of horse and the other. No, but they, no, they, they, they put it go together. Anyway. They go together, dictator and master of horse. I don't think okay. But then, can we send the field console on the dictator? I think we can send the field console. I don't think any one person can do two wars. Yeah, but we, I mean, kind of, like, we don't have any forces, guys. That's yeah. just we can't send. There's ten on the Gallic War and ten on the Macedonian War. And yeah. that becomes 
16 with Philip V. Yeah, no, but we'll prosecute the Gallic War, which only requires 10 land forces, which well, we Well, that's have. all we've got. Yeah, but but they don't they don't need fleets, right? No, but how we, how many do you want to send to the Macedonian War? Yeah, but come. Oh, yeah, yeah we got to send yeah, we'll them fleets, don't we? Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. So I think yeah, my Cut. my opinion. I, I'm not one of the consuls, but my opinion is we should do a dictator because um, it doesn't cost anything and it gives yeah, us the equivalent of three um, legions. And we need all the legions we can get. Yeah, yeah. you guys don't have a good history. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Can we send fleets to fight in the Macedonian War and just recall? Well, how many legions do we have? Because we've no, got... we went through this. They've got to have a decent. We've got nine, uh, ten, we've ten. ten. Because the but guy... one's, one's veteran, so that counts as eleven. No, no, we got we got eleven, counting to twelve. One, two, three. So fleets or uh, nine, troops? We got, we got yeah. eleven. Twelve. 12 legions. 12 troops equivalent, and we have nine fleets equivalent. Right, okay, so 11, 11 legions, one of which is a veteran, so that counts as 12, and we've got to take on 10 guys. So we've just got a slight advantage at 12 to 10 yeah, without but then the dictator. Yeah, but then you have the field console as well. So if it's just field console, then and who is the field console? Well, He's got a military strength of four yes. at the moment. Yeah, so then you add four more, or you do a dictator, or dictator master of horse, which would then bring us to, That brings us to 15, so we should be able to at least address the Gaelic War with that. Yeah. Okay, so now we've got to decide on the dictator to get us the master of horse. And we don't need the master of horse, though. Wait, wait, but we, get, we, we, get we, lost, we lost by one last time. Let's Let's take everything we possibly can. Yeah, like, that's right. Are we going to spend the remaining 30, uh, 30 treasury and buy three more legions? No. I, I think so. Oof. Yeah. I reckon it's too low. Zero. Yeah, but or, assuming we win, we get 20 back. We get yeah. 100 back next time. And if, right. we, and if we, we really can't afford to lose another war. We really need everything. In my opinion, we need everything we can in the war. Yeah, because if we lose this war, then we're done, pretty much. If if we buy buy three more legions, do we really need to get a dictator? Because the dictator could easily turn around, come back to Rome, and take over the take over Rome. But then he'll have yeah, we'll have done a little. You have won the game. (laughs) (laughs) So so no dictator. We just buy three more legions. I, That's my proposal. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, you're not a console. It's. Yeah. It's. That's my suggestion. So, so was were you going to say something before, or you? Uh, yeah, I was just going to say if you are starting to scrape the bottom of the barrel of the Temple of Jupiter, um, just be sure that you can, in fact, uh, determine that you want to just disband legions and fleets if you can't pay for them. Uh, you might want to check that in instructions that that is in fact a legal move. Uh, so, if it comes to that and you have to decide between bankruptcy and dropping a few legions, then that should be an option. But, yeah, I'll just double-check that if I were you guys. We can definitely, like, we can d- dump all the whole fleet, right? It's, sorry, okay, so we don't need fleet for the Gallic War. Can't we just yeah. send the fleets to fight the Macedonian War and recall them next uh, Recall them next turn? The Mas- There's no Macedonian fleet war. It's only we just need five transport ships, that's all. Oh. Oh, okay. Yep. Okay. Ah, oh, okay. My misunderstanding. So we can we can disband four fleet, so we have the five left to take us to Macedonian War next time, so we don't have to pay the upkeep of the other four. And we can buy another three legions, so we'll bring us up to fifteen plus four for the field consultant, which is nineteen to ten. Now surely even a triple one would get us a victory with that one. I don't, know, I don't know if there's a bad omen from the gods or something, but <laughs> it's out for a bit. Would, would a triple one actually win us? On a 19 to 10. Um, can, we, can we do a theoretical calculation, Warwick? Yeah, absolutely. Um, don't forget you've got your uh, sand pit, your drawing markers, your, your tokens. Um, well, yeah, so if, if, you can, if you can calculate for us. So it's a bad 
Yeah. All right, let's let's do a simulation. So uh, tell me about your Roman force. What do you got? Uh, 15 legions. Yep. And a field consult with a military skill of four. Okay, yep. the ninth, Versus yep. a Gaelic war of 10 legions. Okay. And we, we just rolled a triple one. And you just rolled a triple one? Yeah, it brings us to 22 to 10. 9, 10, 11, 12. So, uh, which is a stalemate, one legion, one fleet loss. So if you rolled a triple one uh, with um, yep, the strength of nine difference, the difference of nine, um, yeah, you would have gotten a stalemate. Yeah. Um, that would be the worst result we could get. Yes. That's the worst, yep. So basically, you would, we would need to roll a, what's that, a two. That's six, six or more. Three, four, five. If you can roll a five or more, you'll get a yeah. victory. On three D sixes. Yeah, so that's a, a two so. twos and a one. So we need three, yeah, two, three twos or over. But uh, don't forget, if you hit one of those disaster or standoff numbers, and that'll upset your day. Yeah, and then we've also got. So if you look the first victory. Yeah, but that doesn't matter how many. That that really doesn't matter. We lose four lead points. We lose four lead. Well, we, we've, we've got to pros try and prosecute one, at least one more. We've got to try and get this down. I mean, I seem to have a clear candidate for a dictator, at least not with a high military score. So, Well, Manlius will put himself forward as dictator or master of horse if that's required. He's so young, the, he's bald. We have to have a dictator to have a master of horse, don't we? Yes. Yeah. And the dictator chooses their master of horse. Yeah, and it can't be the same person. Well, no. I think I think uh, Claudius should be master of horse. No, sorry, uh, dictator. He's only got a military skill of two. Uh, oh, shit, it's the wrong one. <laughs> uh, uh, sorry, it was Sulpicius. I got it mixed up. Yeah, what are we looking at now? He's the same as Manlius. I think, um, you know, Marcus had a good point about worrying about the dictator coming back, so we want someone with low popularity. He's relatively new. So someone like Alias, the younger, <laughs> who's currently um, no. not popular but has a military um, skill of three. And yeah, maybe yeah. He's a good with these people as well, so... You, know, you lost the other war, though, didn't you? There's a non well, uh, it was a stalemate. I... That's, that's why I suggest that we get someone fresh to roll tonight. Yes, I agree. So, I mean, Chris is in charge, but, but I think that it, it should be either so, still pitious or manliest, right? So, so, maybe both of them together we should work. Uh, that would tie the parties together and, and bring us all victory in the long run. Yeah, I can agree with that. So we're talking about alias from the optimates and oh, what about... <laughs> and a few misses to our roles today no, we're not talking about alias from the well, optimates Wait, there's only one person talking about that <laughs> ignore him <laughs> <laughs> it should be sulpicious uh chris of the hand of god i think manly is man man force. i think out of everyone manly is, um probably makes the most sense Who do we still for? It's Chris's decision. Magnus, Magnus has no popularity. Sulpicius has five popularity. Why does that matter? Because you can oh, get come back to over yeah. Rome. You need, you need popularity. I don't want to. Don't want to come beat these wars and then come back and cause a civil war, guys. I'm not that rude. <laughs> yes, but it's, it's a lot easier when the person can't. <laughs> Power corrupts the corruptible. <laughs> it's good that I'm incorruptible then. <laughs> yeah, but ultimate power corrupts ultimately. Well, he's got a military value of three. Well, it's up to you, Chris, to see the Sulpicius or Manlius. I think we've decided. Well, let's get some stuff to vote on. All right. Well, propose Sulpicius for dictator. Right, hold up. So this is only a decision for the Roman field console. No one else is involved unless they can't agree. The Roman field console. The Rome and field console pick the dictator, and it only oh. it only goes to the Senate 
if they can't agree. Uh, okay. So, field console. Uh-huh. So, uh, Poach Trout, who's watching at the moment, who's in chat, uh, he's uh, watching from uh, uh, the United States right now. Uh, it's uh, bright and early. It's about 8 a.m., just past 8 a.m. there now. Okay, it's nice and early. Get a coffee and enjoy us uh, losing a few wars. <laughs> Well, I haven't been to war yet. The Tarquinius party hasn't been to war yet. And no, King Tarquinius was actually quite well known to be a good warrior. So, yeah. 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 Donabella, yeah. I'm going to go with Manlius as dictator. Mm. Mm. You concur? Oh. Yeah, I'm getting a bit... Don't concur, Chris. I'm getting a bit confused here. Aldo, I tried to vote to make you uh, Pontifex Maximus. Don't I get any any support in return? Oh, yeah, you do, um, but we had a, we, we did have an agreement for that, and you did get something for that. That's true. Maybe. So um, there's fair. Um, so cool. we're looking at overall influence, and uh, sorry to say, but you um, you are right out there ahead of the rest of the pack with influence. And I'm looking at um, Tarquinius. I'm at the bottom of the influence table right now. You are at the bottom of the influence table, although your votes are reasonably high. But um, can't have it all. Uh, you will help. Uh, it's it's between. You got to have the influence. To, I think, isn't it? You got to have the influence to be able to rebel. Uh, no, it is purely a victorious commander who decides upon the uh, just who decides to cross the Rubicon. Say so anybody. Well, okay. So it's uh, if if you're all if you're all <laughs> you're all you're really worried about a rebellion. So I'd perhaps uh, draw your attention to uh, Rule uh, One Point Eleven Point Three, and I'm bringing this up on the screen now myself. Thank you. Um, victorious forces with. Uh, uh, without a commander, will return. But you, starting you, with the highest, are you, are you centering us on the rule? Oh, if you like, I can send to you. Yeah, certainly. Here we go. Well, that's what you're doing. Sorry. Yeah, thank you. There we go. So hopefully everybody can now see what I'm reading. Um, starting with the highest ranking available officer, looking for eligible candidates. So really, we're just looking for victorious commanders in this case, um, who gained a land victory. Um, in that turn, uh, they have to either lay down their command, which we've seen so far with the one victorious command under Julius. Uh, he laid down his forces and returned them, and we went through that formal step of, of checking for that. Uh, or they can just simply declare themselves in revolt. Okay, now there's a couple of factors further down the track that a rebel commander needs to account for, in particular that is paying for... Um, uh, certain bills, etc. Now, noting a victorious commander is different from a rebelling governor, and I shared a rebel governor presentation, and they have a, a little bit more to think about. Um, Poach Trout just asked a question, how many active wars are there? Right now, we've got two out of the, the bad four, um, with two unprosecuted right now. Um, so, yeah, b back to the case. So, in this case, a, a, a rebel commander is immediately considered to be marching on Rome uh, and becomes an active war for the Senate in that next phase. And if you read the rules, and if I'm not mistaken, uh, the Senate is forced to fight that war uh, and, and uh, achieve either a victory or a stalemate, etc., um, to, to carry on. Um, if they defeat the rebel, then, yep, they carry on as normal. If it's a stalemate, it remains an active war. Of course, if they lose against the rebel, then that's it. If the rebel and the rest of Rome survives until that revolution phase, then uh, the rebel wins. Um, so that summarises very, very quickly. Um, and I'm sure Poach Trout will come in with any more uh, so, details. So any commander could rebel. Doesn't have to be a dictator. No, it could be any. It could be any victorious commander, which could be a, a field consul, a Rome consul who went to war, or a dictator. Yep. Not master of horse. Um, there's some other rules to consider there. They could be. I think a master of horse can potentially be uh, uh, given the choice to rebel as well, but that's on the the master of horse to decide. 
really the only benefit we get from a dictator is he gets the master of horse. Right, and that's adding military rating. So it's giving you more military rating than what you'd normally have under just one commander. Uh, but under the one wrong? commander, under the one commander, you have the field have... console, don't you? Yes, I do. Right. Okay. But in the, under the one commander, we would have a military rating of four under a dictator and Phil. Uh, Master of horse. Master of horse, we would have six. So we'd have two more than what we have without a dictator. Okay. So then, Aldo, you and I need to discuss if, who we're going to pick for a dictator. So, yeah, Poach Trout just brought up the point, and I think I just started to allude on it there, but marching on Rome, particularly in the early Republic as you are now, is very hard because you have to pay maintenance on your rebel legions, and that money's got to come from somewhere in terms of faction and personal treasury. Uh, and I don't think anybody has the money to be um, citing rebellion right now, so you guys are probably <laughs> safe. In which case, if that is, if that is the case, then we revert back and make... Fabius, dictator. Thanks for that, Poach Trout. That's good. Uh, he doesn't have the money to march on Rome. But we can't, we couldn't make him, could we? I uh, thought. It's not Fabius, it's not in Rome. Can't be nominated. Yeah. Yeah, guys, I think that the answer is Sulpicius, as I said. Or Manlius. Okay, well, I've opened I've opened, I've opened bribes. How much coin you got? Uh, it can only come from senators, right? Or can hey. I can I make a deal to pay him in the future? Yeah, yeah but you can make a public agreement. Yes. Uh, I'll pay you. you know if you want, and I'll take um, I'll take the highest bidder. Oh, I'll send you a private message. How's that? <laughs> well, if you're going to start throwing money around, <laughs> <laughs> console could do with some. What are you guys thinking? Have the consuls still not agreed on a dictator yet? Um, well, it'll end up at the Senate. So. Um, All right. So let's let's confirm that rule. But I'm pretty sure it uh, uh, it yeah, has to go yeah. to a vote uh, in, on the floor, and specifically, it then has to be phrased as a proposal. Um, um, mm. If somebody wants to read out that portion in, in the rules, if you look under the uh, the dictator uh, appointment, so that will be under the the. Uh, early senate phase does the coin have for bribery does it have to come from the person who wants to be voted in or can it be from the party so if you're talking about money money can only be distributed between factions during the redistribution step of the forum phase uh so therefore the money can essentially come from anywhere either a faction treasury or personal treasury because at that point right. the right. money's in the air right if so. the consuls cannot agree to appoint a dictator the senate may immediately elect a dictator if the presiding magistrate calls for such elections, which may be vetoed. There we go. So the presiding magistrate now, because it looks like the consuls can't agree, the presiding magistrate is now going to put a proposal on the floor for the uh, appointment of a dictator. Okay. Well, in actual fact, the consuls haven't really discussed it. Oh, we're well, just... in that case, then the consuls should probably discuss it then. Yeah. Well, we're discussing it now. Okay, so... that's fine. Don't, now, don't rush. This is important decision-making, so I'm pleased to see it occurring. <laughs> That's quite interesting. So essentially, we've got two sets of competing bribes, and then two consuls <laughs> discussing how to well, no divide one's up the bribes. In yet. <laughs> <laughs> and, and dictator's worth a lot. It's worth seven influence to you. Master of mm. Horse gets three, I believe. Um, somebody's already putting uh, big uh, ad advertisements in the sand pit. I see. It's very good. <laughs> <laughs> oh, everyone's going to get on it now. <laughs> so somebody doesn't want Manlius to get in. <laughs> no Manlius. <laughs> We've resorted to not talk anymore in this time. <laughs> If we agree that we need the dictator advantage to help us win. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I think we are agreed that we need a dictator. I think the I think we're falling over who 
should the, who the dictator should be. So Cornelius de Lavella, I'm, I'm proposing Sulpicius. Who's that? Sulpicius. Sulpicius. So which party's in? Hand of God. Yeah. <coughs> All right, hang on. Well, I've lost my cursor for the moment. <laughs> right, so the field console has um, suggested Sulpicius, and we'll just see if the Rome console agrees. Go for man. This is worth this is worse than trying to pick the Pontifus Maximus for crying out loud. <laughs> <laughs> Important All decisions. Right. All right. Chris, okay. Chris, are you not comfortable? Then just call for a vote instead. Yeah, I'm going to make. Gonna make oh. well, I'm going to go with this proposal. But, that, uh, we vote for Solpicius for um. Hang on, so I just want. Hang on, I just want to confirm here. Do you do you disagree that it should be Solpicius? No, but he's got a military of three. So you agree? Yes. So, All right. So it does. It does not need to go to the Senate. So he, he will, he'll just be appointed. Bring it to the Senate. Bring it to the Senate. <laughs> <laughs> to the Senate. <laughs> green we're, we're in agreement with Sophia, so we don't need the Senate. Uh, just all right. Uh, Park Winnie. Yeah, he's got a message there that he wrote. Look. Look next to Manlius. He's written a message. <laughs> <laughs> Can you trust a guy that's saying that to your face? Oh dear! Um, wow, the graffiti's getting wild. Let's let's right. keep it to the sandpit, guys. <laughs> I want to play a card. Um, uh, I, I, can a card be played during the dictator no, appointment? No, yeah, good. Can't. All right, good. Yeah, I want to take someone to court for slanderous mis misrepresentation. <laughs> ah, now I'm, I'm pleased you brought that up. So I'm pleased so. you brought that up because remember that can be a proposal that can be passed on the floor. Um, if you look through your Senate, uh, your presiding magistrate's guide, there is particular proposals which talk about um, essentially yes, defaming senators for misconduct. So um, by all means, you can propose a proposal to shame a senator, and I'd love to see that this Senate face. Anyway, we now have agreement between the consoles, and I'm satisfied as, I guess, the, the overarching uh, Adilis Karoulis, who's supervising the correct conduct of the Senate, that Sulpicius is, in fact, now the dictator. So let's go ahead and let's give him uh, the good stuff. So yeah. we'll drag across the, the, the name plaque here. We'll grab him the, the token. Thank you. Um, please go ahead and add plus seven to his influence now. Uh, just what he needed, guys. Just what he needed. 42 influence. Good one. Good so, one, Chris. Yes. Good one, yeah. Albert. Yeah. Thanks, guys. Yeah, Dan, it's doing it, Dan. And your votes would have gone up. <laughs> Me? No. Oh, my vote? Oh. My influence wouldn't have, would have gone up. I would have caught up with the rest of you, yeah, but my, my votes wouldn't go up. Don't worry, guys. I'm good at right. rolling dice, so we're going to win these wars now. All right, so we're now when going we win, to... I'll be vindicated. Um, so does, any, does the dictator need to appoint the master of horse? Yep, so the dictator now needs to go ahead and appoint his master of horse. Um, so before he does that, hang on a sec, hang on a sec. Holding. 5 plus 7 is 42, not 44. Just want to point out that not only is he uh, slandering, but he's cheating as well. Ah, thank you. Sorry, <laughs> I added the nine, but you're right. It's uh, it was plus seven. Thank you. Uh, what do I have? Forty-four, forty-two. Well, uh, look, I don't know. I was about to give master guess, boss to Manlius, but I guess it doesn't make much of a difference if you're that high in number anyway, does it? Yeah, you've got Aeneas um, still as an option for master of horse. Yeah, um, I'll tell you what. Forty-two. Uh, He's twenty. He's fifteen points ahead of anyone else in in faction influence. I don't have to um to vote on Master Horse. I just select him. Correct. Uh That's yeah. Fine. You'll just appoint at your leisure. Yeah. Yes. Uh, that'll be Alias from the Optimates faction. Alias from the Optimates. Uh, Alias, you'll find your Master of Horse tokens in the sandpit if you'd like to take those and add the necessary three influence to that senator. Thank you, uh, Warwick. I can't move the dictator plaque. Uh, mm -hmm. Let me update that now. Stand by. Thanks. It'll just be a permission problem. Yeah, I can see that. Yep, control. <sighs> uh, I work. Try now. From nightmare. <laughs> uh, oops, sorry. If I forgot to put my two. I might go rebellious just for the sake of it. <laughs> As a dictator, I'm going to censor that behaviour. <laughs> okay, uh, it's addition. <laughs> I, I'd like to point out that uh, Poach Trout has made a very apt comment, and I 100% agree with him. He says, the Senate is quite animated this session, more so than the past. Seems the players have the feel of the game. So, uh, yeah, I, th I think he's due. <laughs> yes, definitely. <laughs> All right, so we've, we've done the dictator, and he's picked the master of horse. 
All right, so um, Master of Horse is... Uh, um, okay. Oh, so, yeah, I can't, I can't move the... Um, Certainly, the I movement. just saw the message come through. Yeah, some of these are... Okay, now you should be able to move it. There you go. Updated. Thank you, Thank you for uh, letting me know. Um, okay. okay, so we now have a new presiding magistrate, which is Sulpicius as dictator. So it is now his Senate. Uh, and so we'll hand over to him to, to continue to, to run his, uh, his session here. Okay, so... Uh... We don't need to raise any forces. That's what we agreed on. I believe that if we had a dictator, we wouldn't need to run any forces. No, we wouldn't. Uh, let's wind back. Let's wind back a little bit. You've missed uh, step four there. If you want to do that first, I've got to do the sensor, right? That's the one. Um. <clears throat> so, who should I elect as sensor? Um. So you're always looking for those green prior console markers for anybody in Rome. They can be uh, the current sensor that is uh, eligible. Uh, they just can't be any of the consoles or dictator or master of horse. <sighs> uh, Take a moment. What's going to be best for you? <laughs> yeah, can, it, can it be the current sensor? Yeah, absolutely. Yep, The sensor is actually a position that can be re-elected. Yep. Okay. Uh, well, I'm going to choose Julius of the uh, Reapers Party to be sensor. Oh, well, that's my proposal. No, it's not yeah, consul. Oh, no, I choose it. Oh, he is. Julius is consul, mm. so he can't. He can't. You just say he can't be the uh, same? Okay, I'll keep. I'll keep. Uh, Furious. Thanks anyway. I'll, 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 <laughs> I'll nominate <laughs> Furious since he's a current censor of the uh, Sibibus party. So, do we need to vote on that, or is it just? No, yeah, it's a vote. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, yep. Okay. Uh, well, I guess I'll start with uh, Tarquinius then. Uh, Eighteen against. Ten against. Uh, Rapers party. Uh, ten four. Ten four. Uh, uh, off the Marty's. Uh, Thirteen against. Oh, uh, hand of God. Sixteen four, and uh, Sivibus. Ten in favour. So it's uh. It's thirty six versus thirty one. Submission passes. Ooh. Okay. All right. Uh, Furious can go add another five influence to his uh, influence total for that senator now. Jeez. <laughs> Looks like the fire right is winning here, uh, Reaper Party. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and while while uh, Sempronius is updating the five influence for Furious, uh, uh, he'll also be taking on the presiding magistrate role to run for prosecutions. And watch him prosecute the left. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, I've got to get another three card. There. Um, let me just check the markers. That's all right. Take your time. I, uh, it's good for this to be correct. Of course, if we lose the war, all this will be for nothing. <laughs> yes. Oh, uh, yeah. I think that we should uh, not do prosecutions and just fight these wars. Yeah. Sounds good. Sets his choice. Uh, I'm not sure there's that many people who can be prosecuted. He, he, he could prosecute himself because he wants to get rid of those. Uh, uh, actually, technically, by the rules, he can't actually prosecute well, himself. Kato the Elder, given Jeez. that he's giving a hard time. <laughs> 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 uh, but I want... As a dictator, my unofficial uh, advice is, yeah, that sounds good. <laughs> uh, no prosecutions this, this turn. Wow, Really? I, I no. can't. I, I can't convince you to do at least one. We're all no. friendly. <laughs> no, we are. We are. Well, there's been enough hostility this round. I mean, uh, it, it look. It only gets harder from here to prosecute people. Uh, just the final, final thing. You sure? Why does it get harder to prosecute people? People get more and more popular and more and more influential, and they're big factors in in prosecutions, right? There's a heap of people with. Oh, uh, well, yes. Or, well, yes and no. But don't they? Um... Don't they have defenders, which will have more and more as well? Oh, sorry. Prosecutors. Yeah, but you, prosecutors. Yeah, but you, you do get popularity if you successfully prosecute. There so are there are benefits um, for uh, prosecutors and stuff, yeah. Kicking on, bro. I know, I mean, this, yeah. oh, this, is, this is... You a... Do you want me to prosecute, baby? <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunately, he's not in Rome, so he can't. <laughs> Oh, no, of course, no, that's, that's true, true, yeah. No prosecutions, I've made up my mind. Okay, no problem. If you want to pass the presiding magistrate uh, name plaque back to our good dictator, but that's fine. Sure. That is the perfectly within the remit of the censor to make that decision, so that's fine. 
Good work, guys. Thank, Thank you. you. Yeah. I want the most corruptible senators sitting in my <laughs> yeah. that's, that's why I chose him, aren't you? <laughs> you wouldn't do it. <laughs> and uh, so, no, I'm good here. I can sleep tonight. <laughs> uh, okay, so I was going to say that we agreed not to raise forces, but apparently that wasn't the case. So uh, I'd like to hear some input on that as to what we agreed to. Just before we step on, I see somebody's already on the ball. Everybody needs to remove their corruption markers now and put them back and uh, hide the corruption portions on their concessions. Why do we hide the corruption portion on the concessions? Because, you know, yeah, it's it's a bit funny, but that's that's the, the way the game works. And that, in, for me, in the past, implied that, in fact, that the concession takes were optional. But that's not the case. It actually says in the rules that if the concession's on the board, uh, they have to be taken. But really, it's just a, an easy, bright blinking light for the censors so they can see who is, in fact, eligible for a prosecution. I mean, that could have been achieved via token, like the red tokens or orange tokens as well. Um, but but right, also, for things like... For things like the the shipbuilder, good, yeah, great yeah. point. Yeah, good point. We should build some ships. <laughs> and, uh... Uh, uh, also, as another point of interest, um, <laughs> as a, a point of interest, I just wanted to point out um, who has the highest uh, individual uh, influence on the board right now. Uh, Fulvius. Furious. Oh, no, uh, Furious. Okay. No, no uh, Ju Fabius. Julius. Julius. All right, and, and what's significant about that number of influence? When they get 35, they win. No, 35, they win. So, no, no, not, not no? well, not quite. No, uh, over but 21, it's... he can be uh, choose to be charged. Yeah, you're, you're on the right track there. Oh, so so let's go back to the original figure. What was the original figure you quoted, Posthumous, I went? Uh, 35. So 35 means they are automatically upon, appointed console uh... for life. At 21 they are eligible to be voted in via a proposal to be voted in as consul for life. Now, don't okay. they immediately win? Uh, no, they have to make sure Rome survives until the revolution phase, uh, but which yeah. generally usually occurs he's, anyway. He's not likely to survive himself anyway, so that's all right. But right, uh, yeah. <laughs> the, the, yeah if, the fact that, one, I don't think he, he doesn't currently hold the power of the, the Senate and the fact that he probably doesn't hold the Senate majority of votes uh, to even <laughs> pass that proposal. So he's perhaps not much of a threat, but I just wanted to point that out. That's all. Mm -hmm. okay. So we've got to kill him. Someone assassinate him before he gets close. <laughs> right. It's just Julius. Um, okay, yes, as I was saying, uh, so what did we say about raising more land forces? I thought that we said... We that wanted we... to maximise our forces was the talk, yeah. so we wanted to spend 30 to get three, three more land forces. Yes, yeah. but but that was under the condition that we didn't raise a dictator, because with a dictator... No, 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 well, you're, so well, if we don't win the war, we lose everything. Yeah, we're assuming we're going to get 20 back. I'm thinking that we're going to win anyway. Three I've military. Before and look what happened. Oh, fine. Yeah. Okay, fine. 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 Okay, guys. But <laughs> I don't want to go zero, so I'm going to only propose raising two uh, land forces. So that's going to spend 20 from the Treasury to raise two land forces to go to war. Uh, because I'm fiscally conservative. <laughs> so uh, I guess in that case, uh, we'll start with Tarquinius. How would you like to vote? We need to vote for that, do we? Okay, I thought dictator was just going to dictate. No, no, the dictator okay. just can't be vetoed. That's all. Right, okay. So, yeah, how would you like to vote Tarquinius? Uh, yeah, uh, 18 in favour. 18 in favour. Uh, Reaper's party? 10 in favour. Optimates? 15 in favour. Uh, Hand of God, 16 in favour, and uh, Sibibus? 10 in favour. All right. So motion passes. So, so Quaestar, can you please, uh, yeah, you've already done it, perfect. And I'll move two forces down. Uh, not oh, quite, not quite. No, just, so, just into the field of Mars sorry. so far. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Uh, okay, so now I've got to recall the other forces, don't I? Uh, that is right. If you're planning to send them somewhere else... Yeah, uh, so I will uh, recall uh, all our forces back to Rome. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah that's 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 reasonable. Yeah, you, you, that can be an individual proposal just to bring them back to Rome. Yep, uh, that okay. will also withdraw the commander as well. 
Okay. Right. Uh, so I guess we'll vote on that. So uh, Taquinius, uh, sorry, the proposal is to, yes, with, uh, bring all our forces back uh, and the commander. So Taquinius, how would you like to vote? Uh, in favour, 13. Yep. Uh, Reaper's party. 10 in favour. Uh, Optimates. Uh, 13 in favour. Uh, Hand of God, 13 in favour. And Sivibus. 10 in favour. All right. So motion passes. All right. I'll go ahead and remove the pro-consul marker from Fabius Maximus, who's now back in Rome. Um, so t technically speaking, uh, he's... Senate votes now count back again. I don't think we were quite taking that into account because when a senator is out of Rome, his, his votes don't count towards your total faction votes. So uh, we haven't been doing that to stage. Let's start doing that now. So your current faction votes is only senators present in Rome. All right. Okay. Uh, so if, they, if they have knights, what happens? Uh, again, so their Oratorian Knights, if they're outside of Rome, they're deducted from your total faction vote tally. Um, okay. But I think everybody is now back in Rome. Is that correct? No, so we've got the field console. Yeah, he's still in Rome. Yeah, he hasn't been sent anywhere yeah, he, yet. Yeah, he hasn't gone anywhere yet. So he's in Rome. That's fine. Yeah. Okay. Nobody cares about the field console anymore. We've got the dictator. Now. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> okay, guys. Uh, so we can't do too much because we're pretty broke. So, uh, is there any any uh, advice anyone would like to give? I guess we don't votes of censure. Uh, votes of censure. What? Ah, oh, we got to vote on that, do we? Um, it, it's it's a proposal. I mean, have a look at open up your presiding magistrate's guide and have a look at some of the optional proposals towards the back. Uh, based on some of the conversations I've seen previously, uh, there may be something you want to throw out there. Um, do you know what rule number that is? Uh, it's not a rule. No, it's in your oh. presiding magistrate's guide. It'll be in your email that you were sent originally. Uh, yeah. uh, two seconds. Yeah, we're in a magistrate's guide. Yep, yeah, uh, that's uh, in the file section on the Facebook group for everybody else. Oh. <laughs> oh, if I lose you, it's because I'm opening up to sure. anything. Sure, not, not a problem. <laughs> this one. Yeah, uh, yeah. For, for the current presiding magistrate, always good to have a flick through this guide to see all the potential proposals, and that's not a, an exhaustive list either. Um, it doesn't always have to be an implementing mechanic. There's all sorts of things that you can propose uh, to uh, make this real, right? Um, yeah, I think I, I think I called it the presiding magistrate's guide. And where did you say we find it on Facebook? Uh, it's in the files section. So there's some oh, tabs. File section, yeah, it's okay. in the files section. Yep, you'll see about a dozen or oh. so in there. Um, you can also find it on the uh, Board Game Geek website under the Republic of Rome board game. You'll find it in the file section on that website too. So, so what are we looking for here? Uh, the Presiding Magistrate's Guide. Oh, there it is. Thank you. Oh, it's on the time. Um, so, yeah, particularly of interest to our dictator, who is the current PM right now. Um. Just trying to find it myself. That's all right. This game is way complicated. <coughs> uh, if, if it also helps, I think I listed some of them on the cheat sheet as well in green. You'll see them in green on, under next. Right, uh, just gratitude, reprimands, state of a standard of dress. We went through that one, and it was you didn't we didn't get togas. <laughs> um, convene next assembly appointments of quaestors, senate screen. No, we've already done that. Um, but you can do them again if you want to point somebody different. Uh, same with the standard of dress. If you want to now implement a standard of dress, you, they can always come up again in the in the new year. Yep. <clears throat> or it just likes that because he loves togas. It's true. I, I do. <laughs> <laughs> I'd be wearing mine if it. Um, yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. I think I sent I sent you someone. So what are the impacts of that? I can't. Uh, look. There are for censures, gratitudes, and reprimands. Uh, there are there are no physical impacts to senators, um, but uh, it's just like a black mark if it were against those uh, individuals that come uh, under that proposal. Uh, okay. And, and particularly for something like a censure, uh, yep. the Senate is discouraged from voting them into any public office in the future. But uh, okay. Mechanics yes. would not allow. Right. You understand. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so I would like to put forward a motion of censure against Julius of the Reapers Party. <laughs> Uh, because he he lost he lost well sorry he'll say that he didn't lose but he uh, he drew a, a stalemate in the war 
Uh, yet he still has 22 influence. And I well, think I'm that's... not the only one that draws a star, mate. Well, it's fine, but I think that it's a bit rich. <laughs> he's got all this influence, but he's got negative popularity, and he, he, he didn't win the war. So I would like to uh, take a vote against him. Uh, Here we go. So <laughs> as such, uh, Tarquinius, how would you like to vote on that? 18 against. 18 against. Uh, Reaper's Party, how would you like to vote? So <laughs> we're voting to censor him, so I'm saying against. Just wanted yes. to be clear what the thing yeah. was. Yeah, okay. Yes, you are. 10 against, yeah. Uh, Optimities, how would you like to vote? Um, 13 against. 13 against. Oh, yeah. Uh, well, Hand of God will go 16 4. And uh, Civibus? 5 against. Jeez. 5. 5-4? Um, right, he split, he split his vote. I split my vote. Yeah, that's fine. That's fine. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Uh, well, motion fails then. And I, tell, and I tell you what, you you owe your you owe your hat to Sempronius. He saved you from having to either yes, lose influence or step down. <laughs> yes, okay. indeed. Uh, I would like to vote a motion of gratitude. <laughs> <laughs> hey, good, good call, uh, good call. <laughs> uh, I guess I'll vote uh, Cornelius uh, of the Sidverse Party for being a team player and uh, helping out Rome. Uh, against corrupt senators. So, uh, Tarquinius, how would you like to vote on that? Uh, Tarquinius? Tarquinius, yeah. That's, that's right, Poach, um, Poach Trout. Uh, some pronouns should have asked for some kickbacks for that vote, yeah. <laughs> yeah, no yeah, for next time. I've been against, and I'd like to uh, propose a motion next. Uh, are you throwing a, throwing a card, are you? No. Okay. Um, well, I, that that would only be at the uh, at the leisure of the current presiding magistrate. He can ignore that. If you send yeah, me a message, um, if you hear a proposal, then that's fine. Send me send me a message, and I'll uh, consider it. There you go. Uh, but first of all, I uh, just would like to see how you'd vote for the uh, motion of gratitude for Cornelius. Um, he already said eighteen against. <laughs> eighteen against. Yeah. Oh, jeez. Oh, it's not going to bode well for your proposal. <laughs> <laughs> good, good. You're thinking. I love it. That's good. Uh, good. So, Reefers Party, how would you like to vote? We're so just, what's this proposal? Uh, we're just doing some gratitude for Cornelius and all his hard work. You're, oh, you're we, doing some gratitude. No, the, so different we're passing a motion. If the, I gratitude. the original, um, the original um, proposal said gratitude for Cornelius for acting against corrupt senators, which I think is the part that um, I'm feeling I should vote against. So, so ten against, yeah. <laughs> ten against, yeah. Um, I vote uh, thirteen <laughs> against as well. For the, nice. for the mention of corrupt senators. Uh, uh, Aldo, I'll pay you five five gold if you don't if you vote uh, for this, obviously. So, hand of God will vote uh, sixteen four, uh, and seven of us will vote. Ten in favour. Ah, yes. <laughs> All right. Uh, there we go. Our motion passes. Motion uh, passes. Cornelius. All right. So uh, let, let, gratitude. You got mentioned in dispatches. Uh, you had a vote of gratitude against his name. That's that's very good. For those, um, I, I haven't got it set up that Twitch can see the chat, but uh, it's very funny here. Uh, Marcus and Donna said, "I propose we put a vote of reprimand forward against the current magistrate for wasting everyone's time." And, <laughs> and then naturally, the presiding magistrates come through and said, "Declined." <laughs> Uh, okay, so uh, once again, I'm happy to hear some advice. Uh, if there's anything else we need to do, we've done the gratitudes and the censures. So I think it's um, just the, the war that we need to do, right? Or is there just any... Just oh, yeah, the thing. war. Just down at war. I mean, before we, before oh, yeah. we move to that... There's a war on. <laughs> before we move to that, guys, I'm, I'm a very caring dictator. I'm here listening, so just... Uh, yeah, any recommendations or you think that we're, we're good? I think we're good. Yep. You're good. Uh, okay, so I guess so we, we were going to buy the, the two legions, right? We've done that. That's we've done, we've we did it. Okay, and we don't need to send fleets to the uh, Gallic War, which is what we're going to prosecute, correct? Yep. That's, okay. that's, that's up to you. Yeah, well, uh, just consensus, I guess. 
that we're doing the Galaka. Okay, well, I guess... So, sorry, Warwick, we don't need the fleets, just to make sure. Uh, for the first Garlic War, uh, there is no fleet support required. Okay. Yeah. All right. Uh, so, in that case, I guess I'll put a proposal forward. Uh, four. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Uh, for the, uh, the Dictator, which is me, my Master of Horse, and... Uh, uh, 12 legions to uh, go off and fight the Gallic War. Uh, so I'll take some votes on that proposal. So, uh, Tarquinius, how would you like to vote? Uh, can I, as a quick point of interest yeah. there, you said 12, but that's not all your legions. Was that intentional? Is it not? What do you mean? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Veterans worth. Oh, so 13. No, but he's, he's one legion, but he's worth... Yeah, but yeah, uh, I guess somebody wasn't something wasn't counted there out of the total number of tokens. I just oh, wanted sorry. to check. Just, just, just. Oh, sorry, no, th I was thirteen. Sorry, I, I don't know how I miscounted. Uh, so yeah, sorry, I, I meant that proposal. Uh, to send the dictator, the master of the horse, and all our legions, which numbers are thirteen, <laughs> uh, to fight the first Gallic War. So, uh, Tarquinius, how'd you like to vote? Uh, eighteen in favor. Eighteen in favor. Uh, Reapers party. Ten in favour. Uh, Optimates. Fifteen in favour. Hand of God. Sixteen in favour. And uh, Sivibus. Ten in favour. All right. So our motion passes. Uh, okay. So unless anybody wants to throw in a tribune to keep the Senate open, uh, the Senate session is now automatically closed with the departure of the presiding magistrate. Uh, no. Unless, unless anyone wants to bribe me to pass something, to put something on the table. Uh, unless you throw a tribune, <laughs> tribune down yourself. <laughs> oh, uh, ooh, maybe. <laughs> uh, no, I guess so. Um, so I guess with that, uh, so what we'd like, what, very good. So what we'd like to do now is, if we can have both the dictator and master of horse swap out their purple tokens for their equivalent at war tokens from the stockpile on the left hand side of the board. If you'd like to do that now, just to show that you are now out of Rome, and while we're here, uh, let's let's adjust our new vote tallies with their departure. All right. So uh, I can't click uh, my my one. Your uh, the, the dictator at war. Sorry. Uh, okay. Let me, not, yeah, I'm some sorry. of those might not be updated yet. Let me uh, update some permissions. Which okay. Top, the top one's done. Uh, the the next one is oh, done. Cool. Yeah, I can grab it. Uh, the next one is done. Oh, no, wrong one. All players. There we go. Uh, hopefully that's fixed the, the problem. So, so Dictator, can you do yours? Or is that uh, yep, one second. Yep, I got it. Good, okay. So yeah, just swap your purple tokens out just to show you you are now away. And, uh, and then perhaps once the commander is set, maybe the commander can then... Um, bring all of his uh, forces down yeah. to the first Gallic War on the right-hand side. Let's just tuck these war cards just over a little bit here. There we go. And you can bring your, 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 your war tokens down to the first Gallic War there. <clears throat> Sorry, my soldiers, you mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Bring, bring down your military forces. Yep, tuck yeah. them in next to the first Gallic War there. Uh, yep. There we go. Um, so hopefully, if you get a victory here, you get you'll get to see your first province, which would be awesome. Uh, so then you'll need to start considering uh, governorship proposals. <laughs> so the, the Senate sessions will get even more exciting. Um, okay, I think that's everything we need to do to get ready for the combat phase. Uh, unless somebody else has got something they need to remind everybody of. Um, all right, so let's let's go ahead and let's start doing our military calculations for this one. Let's start with the military rating of the dictator. Uh, so that's just three. And the military rating of the uh, Master of Horse? That's uh, three. Um, I just had a question from Sempronius that I'll, I'll answer here right now, which is public, I guess, good for public knowledge. Uh, he's asked, uh, does anything happen when a senator's influence reaches 20 and their mortality is seven or more? Um, th there's, no, there's no catalyst for anything occurring. Uh, it's just that they are now an elder senator. Uh, they can still be voted consul for life um, if they're surviving. Um, 
but there's no other repercussions uh, with those numbers that you've stated there. Thank you. Okay, uh, so we've currently got a, a total of six now. What is our current uh, strength, uh, Legion strength there? What have we got? Uh, so it should be 12 uh, normal and then 14 from the veteran Legion, correct? With a total of 14. So 14, yep. 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20 in strength. That's a, that's a fairly nice round numbered force. Okay, <laughs> and, and what is our enemy strength? 10. It is 10. That gives us a difference of 10. Okay, so we're getting adding plus 10 to a roll of 3d6. So the if the current commander would be so kind to roll 3d6, and this should uh, surely... Just on the legions, we've got... 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6... It was 12 and then a veteran. Oh, and, and you get... So yeah, okay. All, all good? You're happy? Yeah, yep. right, just checking. Good, no, yeah. good to check. I'm, I'm pleased. I'm pleased you're checking. It's... Uh, um, <laughs> It's good to check. Uh, okay, so yeah, go ahead, dictator, and roll your three d six, and let's see what you get. Okay. Fingers uh, crossed, everyone. Uh, oh, this looks comfortable. Four, twenty three. <laughs> well, you've absolutely a hundred percent smashed them. <laughs> you have smashed them out of the park. That's greater than eighteen, and that's no losses. Right. So that's, there you that's, go. What did you say? Twenty three. Uh, so ten See, uh, plus today. thirteen. Plus oh, right, right, yeah, yeah, sorry. Plus Good. Yeah, everyone, everyone guys, happy with that result? Guys, didn't I tell you not to choose one of these guys that kept losing the war? <laughs> Here I come in. Now, and I just win. Now, so, now, what we just need to check. We've indicated. Now, hang on, hang on, hang on. Let's not celebrate. Yes. Let's not celebrate too early. Who can tell me something about the roll thirteen? It doesn't sound very lucky. No, it's not. It, it, um, it's called a D no, on the card. No, no, oh war. shit. Okay, if somebody would like to go control F in their rule book and look up the word disaster, please. Oh, oh, God. God. oh, oh God. God. <laughs> God. You've set this up. <laughs> You're just bragging about how well you went. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, look, There's I... only one party that hasn't oh, gone. Oh, yeah. <laughs> we, all, we all get really excited, but, uh, but uh, yeah, so while you guys um, look at disaster, I'm going to cheat and look at the bottom of the combat results table, which also gives us a bit of a clue. So half of all of our legions and fleets rounded up are lost. No, oh, I haven't got to the bit where it says the, to roll the 13. Um, so on the card, the war card itself, it specifies D and S, which are disaster and standoff numbers. Uh, you have 13 and 15. So if you roll those on the unmodified roll, which is the 3D6 roll, uh, that will initiate one of those two. Okay. Hey, at least we'd have to pay upkeep. <laughs> <laughs> right. So uh, who's who's found the section on disaster in the book? Uh, I'm on X1.10.21. All right. Go ahead and give us a read of that, would you? Uh, yep. If each worn leader has a black disaster number, follow follow a D on the right side of the card. If the person rolling this is cursed enough to <laughs> roll the number, the combat results table is ignored and the battle is an automatic disaster. Yep. Causing the loss of half, fractions rounded up, of all participating Roman forces. Oh, God. Fleet and legion losses are each halved and rounded up separately. The unrest level is increased by one. Surviving Roman commander remains in command's pro consul unless we called. Okay, um, so oh, let's... even when we roll well, we're still doomed. <laughs> so if the Quaestor could update the unrest level by one, as per the instructions there, so we uh, gain another unrest level. Um, and uh, and uh, how many legions we got? What's that? What's that number rounded up half? Uh, there was thirteen, so it's six and a half. Uh, so seven. So it'll be, it'll be a loss of seven. Um, and I've already done my back end rolls here so the seven are lost of these ones here that means your veterans also gone in this one um so he will he will disappear back into the deck as well you lose those so bearing in mind we've had seven losses and uh and guess what guess what that guess what that means oh that's fitting the storm's coming back here too i've got thunder in the distance <laughs> <laughs> um seven draws on the chits mortality chits um, we need to do seven draws no. of the mortality digits. So let's have the dictator. We're going to do this nice and slow. <sighs> if you get draw twos or draw ones, they also count, and you've got to draw them as well. Okay. Do you want a dictator? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so let's start with the first one. The first one is uh, a tw 12. First of all, uh, what is the ID number of our dictator and master of horse? Uh, mine's 15. 15, and who's the, master, uh, who's the dictator? 
Um, Sorry, Master, Master, Master of Horse is 14. Okay, so 14 and 15 are the numbers we don't want to see here. So the first one was a, a 12. Let's do the next uh, next next one, next draw. Uh, so we're rolling seven times, sorry? Yeah, that's right. Okay. So just do one at a time. We'll just step through slowly. Uh, the next one's 29. Safe there. Next one. None. That's a great draw. Next one. Uh, waiting for it to load. 24. That's okay. Next one. 26. Uh, that's okay. Next one. Two, three, four, five. <laughs> twenty-three. That's also a good one. One more to go. Come on. Oof. Another twenty-three. That's amazing. Ah, oh, nice. Wow. You, you both survive. Um, and there we go. And it already specified us for us there that the current dictator becomes a pro consul. The master of horse is going to return to Rome. So um, uh, I'll take the master of horses token away there now. That's that's he's he's back in Rome oh. now. Although it's a um, yeah this. It doesn't specifically say that we lost this war. No, it's not a loss. No, no, no. That, that's that's right. It's just a it's just a really you know undesirable outcome. That's right. So so is the war over? Yeah. Is it no, over the, the war stays there. The war will continue oh, to stay there. Um, um, and it's now sitting as an active war. So you now got three of four active so wars. So we won, won, but we lost anyway. Yes, yeah. correct. You won, but you lost anyway. So that usually means that something occurred. So, for example, your legions were crossing a bridge and the bridge collapsed underneath you. Or um, uh, let's say you were all on your logistic ships, which wasn't the case of this, and they all sunk at sea in a storm or something. Uh, or you all got stuck I, in a foggy marsh. I think it was an avalanche when we crossed the Alps from, from right. Rome to yeah. Germany. Right. But was that before or after we beat the other army? <laughs> um <laughs> So that that never occurred. <laughs> you okay. never, you it's never, before. You, yeah, okay. yeah. They're, so, still, so. they're still sitting in ambush in the forest waiting <laughs> for us. <laughs> yeah, what actually, yeah, all your shields all spontaneously disintegrated because of a bad manufacturer or something, you know. Um, all right, so uh, hopefully the uh, dictator has now swapped his token out for a pro console marker. And he also took himself a prior console marker as well. <clears throat> and he had a go at how I performed. <laughs> oh, guys. I won the war. The <laughs> no, disaster was natural. <laughs> no, he didn't win the war. <laughs> well, the my war. role would have won. It was just an unlucky disaster. If we had a Pontifex Maximus, which I voted for, <laughs> maybe it would have been all right, guys. <laughs> um, just a question from Poach Trout. Right, put one in. Uh, Poach Trout has said he loves the Roll20 setup. Is there a way you can get a copy of it? Uh, if you just send me either a whisper through Twitch or... Uh, Contact me in any other way that you're already familiar with. Uh, let's have a chat. Not 100% sure, but we can we can explore some methods to, to share this setup around because, uh, yeah, it's, it's pretty good. Uh, I, I certainly enjoy it. Uh, uh, right, so uh, who's our current well, dictator? Uh, well, more than us, clearly. Uh, well, <laughs> uh, Sulpici Sulpicius was, but... Uh, uh, you have you got yourself a pro, pro console, console marker? There we go. I'll bring one over for you. There we are. I already got it. Uh, oh, okay. Um, it's, it just wasn't a fe featuring on my screen. I'll oh. send that back then. Um, it's probably a bit slow. This is very unroman. This is, yeah, this is, yeah, that's that's right. Oh, okay, so... You, so don't, you don't have a pro console marker. Oh, uh, there we go. Yeah, back sorry. No, 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 no. I, I had the prior console. Sorry, that's my fault. Oh, okay, cool. We, we've, we've sorted that out now. Okay. Uh, that's good. And let's uh, remind ourselves, so who's the current Rome console? Julius, uh, Julius. Right, so, uh, me, uh, Julius. Julius will uh, next next year will be the presiding magistrate. So I'm just going to throw that over the fence to him now. Okay, so let's let's round it out the end of our combat phase. Um, so we've we've done death chit draws. Uh, we've uh, changed the unrest level uh, accordingly. Um, all the other wars will now become unprosecuted wars, um, which we which we know about. So we can drag those down into unprosecuted. We'll put that back there. Um, okay, so that's that's all right. We've sorted that out. Um, okay, so let's move on to the um, uh, the revolution phase here. Intrigue. Um, so we're going to start with the highest ranking available officer, and then work our way around, which has actually gone to the Rome console now. Uh, we'll start there and go clockwise, and people can now play cards they desire. So let's head over to the Rome console and the Reapers party. <clears throat> Um, okay, Reaper's Party, uh, you get the first choice of playing any cards from your hand. Would you like to do so? Uh, I'm just having a look here. Uh, I think you've got, you got, you got four there. I'll, uh, I'm going to have a bit of a, a, a peekaboo yeah. while, you're, while you're looking at that. 
Oh, no, it stopped working for me, so I can't look. <laughs> oh, I can I can allocate. Can I allocate a card? Uh, a concession? Yes, if you would like to yeah. assign a concession to a senator, you may do so. Okay. Put it on mine. <laughs> <laughs> Why would I give it to you? Because you go a bit corrupt if he takes it. <laughs> very, very kind of you. You don't mind about being corrupt, though. No, nah, I'll take it. <laughs> All right. Oh, uh, there's uh, the card. Right click and flip it over. It oh, is the tax farmer number six. And uh, which is the lucky senator to get that one? Well, oh, hang on. I'm trying to zoom in here, but it's not. Well, oh. now, Killis is the only one that doesn't have one. Uh, you can assign it. You can assign multiple concessions to a single senator if you like. Because Achilles is getting old, what happens if he dies? He loses the concession? So those concessions will go to the forum where they will be voted on by the Senate to be assigned to a senator. Oh, okay. I might give it to my faction leader. You might as well get something for being a faction sure, leader. Sure, not a problem. What I'm going to do is I'm going to send that to the back uh, for oh, you. Thank you. There we go. Uh, all right. Uh, any other cards you'd like to play at this time? Uh, sorry guys, I'm still trying to, uh, I don't think so. Okay, let's move on uh, to Indominus's faction. Uh, are you playing anything this round? Uh, yeah, I will. All right. I will play this card. Tell me if that's okay. Do you right. need to flip it first? Uh, just wait, is it just dropping in your zone, eh? Oh, no, in the middle. Yep, flip it over, yep. Cool. So he's playing uh, Amelius Paulus uh, Macedonicus. Uh, oh, does anybody else have ID 19? Just do we're doing a final double check. Does anybody else have ID 19 senator in their position? Uh, nope. Nope, I don't think so. So he'll be eligible to play that into his party. So, yep, bring him in. Uh, Where's the ID number was? Oh. Uh, it's underneath the name of the senator. All oh, right, okay. Yeah, I, I've had another look. I can't see another number 19 out there. So... Um, uh, Amelius uh, 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 Paulus will uh, be added to that party, brings with him some great military uh, and some uh, good disaster standoff uh, bonuses there, which would have helped Another in that last battle. Well. Yeah, yeah, that would have been handy. I just want to point out that my party is the only one that hasn't gone to war. So if you guys want to survive, you know where to look. <laughs> so. Uh, it's well, only on Macedonian war, though, right? Look at his influence now. It eh? says it nullifies got, the... It doesn't matter. He's got a military yeah. skill of five. He's off. Oh, no. uh, any other cards you'd like to play at this time? No, that's it. Okay, let's move across to uh, Sempronius' faction. Are you playing any cards at this time? No, I am not. Okay, uh, scrolling down to the Hand of God faction, are you guys playing any cards this time? No cards. Okay, and down to the Optimates, are you guys playing any cards? No. All right, that is the round the robin of the room there. And uh, we uh, have no defeat conditions, no victory conditions met at this stage. Um, so that will conclude... Well, I, was, I really had really high hopes that this this year was going to be so much better. It started great. We had a great round of initiatives, some good card draws. Uh, it looked you, you'd done the pre-calculations. It looked like a guaranteed victory, and then it just ended up in the stink. Uh, that's that's a real shame. But that concludes our session for a, a, another year. Any other comments from the floor? Uh... Once again, guys, if we had a Pontifex Maximus, that would have been all right. <laughs> That's so, it. We I had blame, one before. It didn't do I anything. blame your paganism. <laughs> <laughs> all right, I just want to say the overconfidence, the, the overconfidence from the hand of God was just amazing. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Oh, dear, oh, dear. Um, I, I have... Trouble playing in the next two weeks. Yeah, that's okay. Uh, if you just confirm that you're unavailable, uh, just through the, the WhatsApp or the Facebook, and then uh, we'll we'll just shift it to the following weeks uh, based on uh, your confirmations there. Okay. Yeah. Uh, but that's that's good. Uh, good good to get ahead of time. Uh, so we we may have some uh, some time off. Um, and uh, I might uh, host something else uh, in the in the meantime for the to chat. Recuperate. So, uh, to recuperate and think yeah. about uh, how to how to go forwards on there. Yeah. Um, all right. Uh, any it's other very comments? Suitable. The rain is really pissing down here now. <laughs> is it? I can't hear it. Oh wait. Where, where are you guys? You're in Melbourne. 
No, can no, I, I, I can hear it, Chris. I yeah, because he's off. not far away from me. He's just a, down the road. Yeah. <laughs> Henry, like that is. Yeah. Block apart, all right. So where, yeah. where are you? Canberra. Well, yeah. Oh, okay. West Bell Connor. Oh, I'll search you right for living there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, Ritter ain't nice. Can't complain. Yeah. yeah. We, we it's can't just, it's raining heavier now than yeah. when the, they had the big storm warning earlier, the Sabo, <laughs> and that just went through and was not much at all. Yeah, stayed <laughs> for about got, 10 minutes. Yeah. I got absolutely soaked on Sunday riding my motorbike back from uh, from up north. <laughs> down, yeah. So where are you? I'm in uh, New South Wales Central Coast. Oh, okay. Oh, nice up there. Mm-hmm. All right, folks. Well, I'll, I'll dismiss our, our stream from here, and uh, and of course, you guys are also welcome to depart if you so desire. But uh, thanks again for your dedication and your enthusiastic Senate session this time round. And uh, we'll see you all when we confirm uh, via our various groups uh, from there. But uh, uh, yeah, uh, farewell <laughs> to you guys. Probably. For those on the stream, hang around. I'll come back and talk to you guys soon. I'll uh, see you guys next week. Okay, we're back after another fascinating assembly. I, like, like I said to the, the senators there, I, I had some really, really high hopes. I, I was really impressed with the draw of cards in that uh, initiative uh, set uh, there, through all six there. The, the card draws were, were quite comfortable. Uh, no other additional bad war cards. We saw the first Aurelian War drawn there, but that's a, an inactive war. Uh, so that wasn't going to cause them any trouble, particularly because they had already defeated the second Aurelian War. Uh, it's a shame they won't get any of the, uh, the money from that. But then again, it's only 10 talents when they do eventually defeat that. But um, uh, nonetheless, it didn't add to their headache. And look, they, they've done, I think, all the right things uh, looking to uh, attack a war. They were looking for a quick win there, and I think that was probably a good choice to go for the first Gallic War there. Uh, they're just that role. Um, uh, the, the role went the, the wrong way. Um, I see Poach Trout just asked a question. He said uh, he missed the initiative phase. No uh, initiative phase. No wars were drawn. We said, yeah, we did. We did see a, a war drawn. That was the first Aurelian War, um, which is a non-armaments war, so it went inactive. So thankfully, it didn't yeah it didn't add to the problems that they were were currently facing. So uh, they've got the one active war, which is the first Gallic War. They decided to hit, but dropped because of a disaster. Um, Everything else was right, just that one disaster. And they really needed that win there uh, this year to really start to turn things around. Uh, so now we go into yet another uh, year of uncertainty. Um, not sure how many cards are left uh, in the early Republic deck. In fact, I'm going to have a bit of a squiz. Um, yet they'll still definitely get another whole cycle of, of early Republic cards before they move into the Middle Republic. Uh, of course, the big question is, is will they make it to the Middle Republic with everything that's going on? They're, they're really struggling on a couple of fronts now. First of all is that unrest level. That crept up pretty pretty quickly there. Uh, they're now sitting at an unrest level of five, and that's starting to get into a very uncomfortable territory. Uh, even more so is that the current Rome consul who will be uh, hosting the State of the Republic address in the next population phase, he has a, a popularity of minus one. Um, so he will want to roll the best role he's ever rolled ever in his life uh, to really make sure uh, they don't face any more damage. In fact, this could be their undoing is uh, a really bad role in that uh, population phase. Um, they could probably face another manpower shortage um, or they could even start to see some mob rights with some really bad roles there. So um, uh, my fingers crossed for them that they can survive that. If they can get through that really difficult State of the Republic address, um, they should be okay. Now, I guess they'll be hopefully looking to throw in and sponsor as many games uh, as they can to bring that unrest level back down to really help to try and... Uh, support that upcoming State of the Republic. On the other hand, uh, as well, that State Treasury is abysmal, sitting currently only at 10 talents. Um, <sighs> yep, they'll get their 100 talent draw in the next round. They suffered some heavy casualties on, on in that land war there. They're going to have to recruit to be able to do any damage. I, I suspect that their options will be limited, so they're going to probably try and hit that first Gallic War again. Uh, now, I note that it is the first of three Gallic Wars. I don't know if there are any other Gallic Wars in the early Republic deck. I haven't checked. Uh, fingers crossed for them that there aren't any and they don't exist until the middle or late Republic. Um, I see your question there, Poach Trout, about whispering. Um, I think it's a, an option 
looking at my channel logo or something in particular. Oh, there you go. Somebody else has just replied to you. Um, thanks, thanks for that. Uh, I can't even pronounce your username there. C S Y N T. Thanks, thanks for uh, helping him out there. That's good. Uh, so hopefully they don't encounter any more Gallic Wars, so that will double in strength. They really need to get that as a victory. If they get that a victory, they then get the province. Now I haven't looked at that province, but hopefully that province gives them some additional funding as well. It won't be much, but any money towards the state treasury will be helpful. So uh, yeah, still continues to be difficult. What I've seen in games in the past is generally that fifth assembly or that fifth year generally is the pinnacle, is uh, a part of one of the more difficult years in the early Republic. If, uh, if they get through this next year and they can actually get a military victory, then that will be a, a face towards um, a, a recovery, a, a return to a stability, if you like. They'll continue to have to they'll have to continue to cooperate amongst each other to really ensure uh, they can get themselves across the line. So my 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 concern is for that population phase upcoming. Let's hope they really smash and sponsor games. They get all that money from all their concessions and they really pitch in to, uh, you know, really bring that unrest level back down. So that's my recap for, for today's session. Um, look, certainly welcome uh, your continued uh, comments. Uh, be sure to follow us on uh, on Instagram as well. That's Aust Nova Roma, A-U-S-T Nova Roma. And you can look us up on Facebook as well. We have a page uh, that you can uh, check us out. That's at Aust Nova Roma. You should be able to look us up uh, through Facebook groups uh, and pages there, and you should be able to find us. Love to hear your feedback. We always post uh, on the following day about uh, doing a recap of the session that's just gone. Uh, yeah, interested to hear your thoughts, uh, your strategies, uh, your feedback for the Senators uh, and what you think they should have done and what they, you think they should do. Uh, we certainly welcome that. Uh, of course, you can also uh, email us uh, here at ostnovaroma at outlook.com. That's A-U-S-T, Novaroma, at outlook.com. Uh, the recap I usually post out, it'll be, it'll be a post. Uh, I do it on both the Instagram uh, as well as the, the Facebook page. Uh, the, yeah, the, the recap, normally midday Australian Eastern Standard Time. Uh, which will be uh, early morning Rome time, so maybe 5, 6 a.m. Rome time, uh, if you're really looking to see that recap uh, come out quickly. So, uh, yeah, interesting session. I certainly enjoyed myself. I hope you guys at home watching on the channel enjoyed as well. Thanks for tuning in. If you haven't already, please drop a follow. We're looking to build this channel. Uh, we're looking to produce more Roman-themed content going forwards uh, on top of this. Uh, it's been a great session tonight. Thanks for joining us. Uh, hope to see you uh, in the weeks to come. We'll try and get some more streaming uh, variety out there. Uh, but this has been great. Uh, but until next time, uh, Walete. Well,